You're up before your breakfast, are you? Yeah. I didn't sleep so well. I never do away from my own bed. That's why all the are such a misery. Good job I did get up early, though. There were no trouble under the door from Hilda. Well. Says she got tonsillitis. Well, I think it's tonsillitis. Aye. Looks like tonsillitis. <laughs> is, uh, is your friend up? Lord, if I know. I haven't heard her. Mind you, I didn't sleep too well myself. I'm not surprised. Look, I know you don't believe me, but what I did to her give her no cause for leaving home and coming round here. Of course I believe you. You'd be a mug with husband like she's got. Who did she say you used to play for? Oh, it were Wigan. Loose forward. Oh, dear. I wish I'd found that out a few weeks back and all. You didn't know till last night, then. <laughs> In that case, I'm not so sure I do believe you. Look, Betty, as God is my judge, if what I did to her mm. was grounds for leaving her old man, I'd have 16 in every flipping room here, wouldn't I? I've told you till I'm blue in the face. It's her. She thinks life's one big fairy story. I mean, tech last night. Draped in the door all there like Greer Garson and gone <laughs> potty. Good night, sweet prince, she says. Good night, sweet prince. <laughs> She's got that out of one of them flaming love comics. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna get rid, aren't I? Oh, yeah. How? What's up with you? You had eight hours solid sleep last night, snoring fit to wake the dead, and you done now, but you're on your head off since ah, you got up. Still tired, aren't I? Some of us did hard days graft yesterday. Some of us did hard nights boozing and all. Uh, what time is it, for heaven's sake? Just gone eight. Oh, Lord above us, overslept again. Oh. Do you know you two make a good pair? Forget I said that. Come on, give us a kiss. You can do better than that. What, on the street at eight o'clock in the morning? Well, it never stopped you before we were married. I never saw you at eight o'clock in the morning before we were married. Yes, you did. Come on, give us a kiss. That's better. Now get off to work like you told <coughs> hey, Morning. that were clever. Kidding us all that Shirley Temple was stopping the night and it was you all the time. Thought you were a bit anxious to shout last orders. Would you like to hear the truth? What? And spoil it all? No thanks. I'll stick to my fantasies. More exciting. Mm. Ta-ra! There you are. The minute I shoved my nose through that door, you stayed the night, did you? Oh, take no notice. They're all daft round here. Rita Fairclough's not that daft. Rita? Well, Rita would be joking. She'd have good in his Rita. Pity you don't feel the same way about all those women. Look, I do appreciate all you've done, Betty, honest. Mm, and another bus dashed past. Come on, let's get some breakfast inside you. She did. Hey, Mark. Shall I give her a knock? No. You stay where you are. She'd just leave drag in and shut the door. Here, I'll see to her. Gone. Gone? Not a sound of her. Is she not in the bathroom? No, I've told you, not a sound of her. The bed's made, but not a sign. Honest. She must have sneaked out, you know. Well, you I... <laughs> I thought it'd surprise you. Hello, Wendy Love. We thought you'd gone. Hey, Freddy Love. Where would I go? Did you pay, pay for that? Uh, yes, I did. How's it looking back there? Oh, very nice. It's much better than when we had the tables in there. You know, there's something about cards and records that... Well, they're modern. Which is more than you can say about our rock cakes. We serve very good food here. We were a credit to the neighbourhood. Well, we Steve, but when we sold food here, a credit to the neighbourhood. Well, well dear, I'll we'll tell you. Well, we are credit to the neighbourhood when we sold food. Mavis, here. give Needle a shove. You begin it sound like Elton John. Well, we were. I agree, actually. So do I. Do you mind if I look at some patterns now? <laughs> no, really, great sandwiches. <laughs> uh, though a bit on the fattening side, I'm not altogether sorry you packed it in. Oh. Are you swimming? I'm trying to take off a pound or two. Before you do, do us a favour. Nip next door and have your breakfast and let us know where it's like. Well, can't you go in and find out yourself? Uh, not exactly, yeah. I think they'd slip rat poison in salt pot. <laughs> we are not exactly persona grata there, as they say. You are? Uh, persona grata, it means someone who's wanted. Well, uh, we are non-persona grata, actually. It's Latin. 
Oh. Well, what she's trying to tell you is there's now a great deal of love lost between us and Dawson. Ah. That's him at Owens next door. Not a great deal of love lost. That's English for non persona whatever. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'd, I'd oblige if I could, but I'm a bit rushed for time. Uh, but I could go in for me tea. Right, and if it's marvellous, we don't want to know. <laughs> right. Oh, um... Now, see, he's forgot what he's coming for. How many times have I told you not to talk to him until they've actually bought some of It's all coming back. A pencil sharpener. Give us 10p and you can have the finest pencil sharpener that 10p can buy. Don't want it wrapping, do you? No, it's fine as it is. I'll uh, see you tonight. Unless it's four star. Unless it's four star. <laughs> there are. Bye. Bye. He's a nice boy. Listen, he may be a persona what's it to you, but he's too young and innocent to get in your clutches. Yeah, I'll have this one. Ah, oh, she'll look lovely oh, in She that. looks lovely in anything. Hey, don't let her hear you saying that. She's big-headed enough as it is. Who's a clever mummy, then? That's not bad if I say it myself. Hello? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's marvellous. Oh, great. Yeah, of course I'll tell him. Where is she now? In the kitchen. I wouldn't wonder, mad. You should be making herself useful. She what? Well, I mean, she did make us dinner, didn't she? Yeah, she did. No wonder her husband's managing. No, <laughs> oh, it were a bit. Oh, it were more than a bit. But the Mrs. Walker. <laughs> Everything going all right without me? <laughs> Rob is a turn. Yeah, yeah. Who's speaking? Hey, it's him. Him? Him. Him? I take it. Oh, <clears throat> hello. Fred G speaking. Well, uh, yes. Yes, she is. Uh, six o'clock. Yes, I will. Well, I'll, I'll do my best if, uh, if you're sure that's the right thing to do. Right, I'll... Six o'clock, then. See you then. Right. He's coming. All right. Six o'clock. He says we'll have to get her out at road for a quarter of an hour. Well, perhaps she can't stand the sight of blood. Nah, it, Betty. What's he up to, do you reckon? Obvious, isn't it? I mean, it's an old police trick. Question them separately, they don't know what each other said. But this way, I mean, he'll not see her nodding while you're telling him a pack of lies. I'm telling him the truth. Oh. You reckon he'll believe it? Well, he will if he knows her. Husbands don't know their wives, lovey. They're the last to cotton on. Oh, you've been a real help, you, haven't you? A real help. I'm only trying to prepare you. <laughs> you who? Can I do anything? Uh, no, thanks, love. No, no, we're all ready for opening. Oh, you can spare a minute. I'll make some lovely sandwiches and oh. a pot of tea. I'll come through in a minute, love. I'll be waiting as mm -hmm. ever. God help me. Look, give us a hand, will you, tonight? Getting her out of way. I'll get her upstairs. You get him in the living room and lock yourselves in. Lock myself in with him? Don't be so daft. If you scream, we'll hear you. Oh, how did I get myself mixed up in a mess like this? I've told you. You're too handy with your cuddles. Fancy any afters? What have you got? Well, apple pie and cream, chocolate gato, and if you can manage it, me. I'll, uh, have the apple pie and cream, please. Wise boy. Evening, sir. All right, Mrs Bishop. Oh, fine, thank you, Mr Dawson. You've, uh, got the bag for the night safe, haven't you? Yes, I have. I'll take it to the bank myself. Oh, aye. Right. I'd remember that. The money's your responsibility. Evening, sir. Anything you want, Janice? How about a rise? After a day? Well, I thought I'd get me claim in early. Can I give you the bill now so you can close half five on Wednesdays? Ah, plenty of time to go home and get changed and slip into something more comfortable and meet me. Now, why should I go to all that trouble to meet you? Can I help at all? Yeah, why not? Look, I've borrowed this pad for the night and I've got this bird coming around and I want something a bit sexy. Do you know the sort of thing I mean? Oh, yes. Well, uh, what, what gets you going? Mavis, watch you. Well, I like all kinds of music, actually. Yeah, but what gets you really floating? Leave her alone. Mavis, come in here. <laughs> I'm wanted. Do you want to hear it? Go on. I marked it out of ten. Tomato soup, five. Spaghetti on toast, 
Eight. Apple pie and cream, six. Waitress, eleven. I thought you were teaching him business management. Well, it's all part and parcel, isn't it? The day he stops appreciating women is no good to me. He'll either be dead or stupid. Isn't that right, darling? Did you get rid? She's upstairs washing her hair. I told her you couldn't abide women with mucky hair. You're up them stairs like a shot. Oh, you do make me feel good, you. Mm. Hubby will be here soon. Aye, any minute. I wonder where he's got to. Oh, they're all the same, fellas. Never there when you want them. No, oh, you have trouble and all the year. All the time, and that's when I want them and all the time. Hiya. Listen, is Len back yet? No, not yet, love. Could I have a quiet word with you? Excuse us, love. Yeah, sure. Hey, don't you wish you had secrets? My life is an open book and I wouldn't want it any other way, Betty. <laughs> Get away. As true as I'm standing here. Well, I'll be blown. I can't wait to tell Ray. He's had his chin on his chest for weeks. Well, force yourself. I tell you what, let's make it a real surprise and we'll get something out of it as well. Oh, heck, he's a big hulk of a fella, isn't he? Fred G. Hi, uh, Mr. Williams, is it? That's right. Is she out the way? Hi. Come on through. We, uh, we won't be disturbed. That's the way I want it. Hello, Fred lad. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I can't hear a thing. Hang on a minute. Who is it that's supposed to be beating Fred up? Oh, this old flame of Fred's husband. I didn't know Fred had a husband. Oh, you know what I mean. She leaves home, comes running to Fred, now all he's turned up. Hey, what's she like? Oh, she'll be more at home with Henry Cooper. But he's married to an Italian. I meant as a sparring partner. Not to sound. Hey? hey, perhaps they've killed each other. Double crime passionelle in Coronation Street. Hey, I think I'll just snip home. I'm my best frock for the dog of <laughs> Ah. I've got a message for you to one pint and then off home back to his place. Who says? Your wife and his. You better give us a couple of pints then. Right. Hey, now look, Ray, about that Shh, job. Yeah, well, What's the matter with you? I'm listening, aren't I? For sounds of battle. Don't tell me your old man's turned up. He has, you know. Oh, boy, I've been looking forward to this. Let's just see how tough Fred G is. She loves you, lad, and loves a powerful force. Who might to go against her love? But she is married to you, isn't she? You know, till death us do part and all that. Look, if she wants you, that's the end of it. I'm not going to stand in her way. Well, what you come round here for, then? Well, I'll tell you. Now, you know her, don't you? Not very well. Well, you know what she's like. Her head's full of romance and that. I've been living with her so long, I'm getting her like her myself. I've noticed. Yeah, well, look, if I just forgot about it and didn't bother, she'd think I was sitting at home, crying my eyes out. And she'd come back, wouldn't she? Would she? And of course she would. And a couple of days later, she'd be back here. Then back to me. She's like a flipping yo-yo. We wouldn't know where we were. So I thought, play it like it happens in one of those books that she reads. I'll go out and come back when she's down here. Play the old heavy. You stand up to me. Say she belongs to you. And I'll give her the old light page 34. You know, how her love and happiness is the only thing that matters. And you can give her a life that I never could. She tells me you're getting your own pub, is that right? Well, I'm hoping. Well, there you go, then. She'd be great behind a pub bar, our Wendy. I've seen her knock back 14 pints in four hours and not a flicker. And she'll be all yours. You do want her, don't you? Uh, well, of course you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't have put her up, would you? Now, I'll come in, playing it tough. You put your arm round her and come out with something like, uh, I can give her the happiness she's needed all her life. And I'll just back out, graceful-like. So let's see. I'll come back here at quarter past seven. How's that? Fine. Right. There's no point in going daft at a time like this, is there? I mean, we're now if we're not civilised. He's a big disappointment to me, that lad. What, you mean Fred's still got his head on his shoulders? Yeah, he shouldn't have. 
Hey, what are the girls up to? Blowed if I know. I don't know where I am with Rita nowadays. Nice as pie one minute and flying off the handle the next. Do you mean you were there yesterday? You saw her. Yeah, they get like that with me. I know. Call me all the names under the sun and blow me five minutes later, she's laughing and joking. Yeah, dude, it's just the same. Forget them. They're not worth worrying about. Hey, what was the message? One point. Mm. I suppose we'd best be getting back. We'd better add. Hey, I don't get you. You looked a nice, simple lad. He's not so simple. How do you mean? I mean, what I say is not so flaming simple. I'm not the only one who wants to get rid. I've been thinking about cooking pots and that and trying my hand at Chinese. Yeah. When Ray could eat it till it comes out of his ears. My husband's saying, plate of spare ribs, he's in heaven. Yeah, it shouldn't be that difficult. Shh. Is that her I can hear? Nah, I shouldn't think so. I've tired her out today. She's a good little sleeper, oh, any oh. road. Well, uh, haven't we got them well trained? Haven't we just? You'd think they'd never seen food before, wouldn't you? What's all this in aid of? Battered wives. We decided charity begins at home. Well, don't look at me. I didn't hate her. She'd kill me. It's not in aid of anything. We've been thinking. And we came to the conclusion that anybody can celebrate being rich, but it takes a good one to celebrate being poor. So, being good ones, we're celebrating. Being poor? Yeah. Well, what did you want us to do? Bang his head against wall? Lie down in gutter? You can act a bit sensible for a start. There's a big difference between lying down in the gutter and lashing out like that. Too true, true. Look at this. Fillet steak, Cantonese style. You don't pick that up for coppers. Or oh, spare ribs. Or oh, crunchy duck. Have you gone mad or what? Where do you want it, ain't Ben? Well, uh, we might as well, I suppose. I mean, you don't get this lot on sale of the turn, do you? Hey, are they all right like this, Rather to put the best suits on? Oh, leave them as they are. Why not, Gerrard? Right. Spare ribs. Yeah, hello. Are you sure I'm all right here? I'm not one as likes being seen in public in my curlers. Don't worry, you look lovely. It's only me and Fred getting in. Oh, that's all right then. Secrets are for strangers. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll have to go. We're getting busy. Hey, what are you up to? Hey, don't ask me. Is she in there? Yeah, it's a cup of tea in the pot in the kitchen. Oh, wish me luck. Not luck you need, love. Police protection. It's totally unlike anything I've ever done before. Oh, I don't know. You've worked in a shop before, haven't you? What about Gamma Garments? Yeah, or oh, Swindley. That was unlike anything else at all. <laughs> it was, in a way. Did you ever hear from him? No, not for years. I got one or two Christmas cards and then. Who's Swindley? Oh, just a gentleman of our acquaintance, love. I uh, come, we've had some Romans round here. That friend of our Dennis is, um, what's his name? Jed Stone. Jed Stone. He drove me mad, that one. Oh, Doreen did the same to me. I wonder where she is now. Oh, she's probably a Brigadier General by now, I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> well, I heard she'd left the army, got married and had a baby. Not necessarily in that order, though. Who was it told me? Oh, Alma Linda. It's only a rumour, though. Would you like me to go? I mean, if this is old home week. Oh, no, love. You stop where you are. You're living proof that as fast as one madden court goes round here, another one comes. <laughs> Hello, here comes trouble. Oh. 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 Thought I'd find you here. Joe. I said to myself, she'd be with him, I said. But not to talk about him the last six months. That's your should be, I said, with a lover. I had to come, Joe. You didn't want me. You had to do now of the sort. You're my wife, your place is at home. You can just pack your bags and get outside. He doesn't want you. Just ask him. Do you want me, love? Well, of course I do. But I mean, uh, well, if you're happier with him, there's nothing else I can do, is there? What do I do? I think you'd better go with him, love. I mean, he is your husband and he does want you, and it's your happiness that counts, isn't it? Joe, love. Why didn't you say? I'd never have left you if I'd have known. Take me home, love. Take me home. Hey, it's for the best. I'll never leave you again, love. Never. I'll send your things on. I'll get you for this. Don't blame him, love. Blame me. It's me who's to blame. It's not him. He's a good man. Come on, love, take me home. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Show's over. Get back to your drinking. Why, heck, Fred, you've got the look of the devil. If you fell off the court, you'd land in the divvy. <laughs> <laughs> what was that fella shouting about? He got his wife back, hadn't he? Wouldn't you be knocked? <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's me finished. Mm. Ah, me too. Any more wine in there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Did you already get the one bottle? Oh, aren't they marvellous? One minute they're cursing you for spending the money, and the next minute, oh, well, did you only get the one bottle? Well, I only asked. Yes, I only got the one bottle. Coffee. Well, I wouldn't say no. Wine always makes me thirsty. A beer has the same effect on me. Hey, I tell you what, kid. These two have mellowed a lot. Oh, I stick a dummy in the mouth. It works wonders. Ray, they're talking about you. All I know is I've had a good meal which I could have done without, and which has cost me a packet which I cannot afford. What's next, brandy? Mm. How did you guess? There you are. Right, will you pour them out? I'll go and get the coffee. Right. What's going on? Just you wait. All will be revealed. And I don't mean what you think. You haven't been borrowing off your Gatsby pals, have you? No, I haven't been borrowing off my Gatsby pals. Nor have I sold that diamond that Richard Burton gave me, nor did I get this lot on tick. How much housekeeping have you got left? Not a lot, but it's been worth it, Chuck. They're up to something, you know. They always are, this pair. Right, then. Huh? OK, kid. You and me. Well, I think youth before beauty. Oh, to Fairclough and Langton. And uh, don't forget, that means the four of us. Well spoken. To the four of us, who are once again back on the road to riches, seeing as our Mr Conran has got himself another developer and the hotel job is back on. Honest! The big one? The big one, yeah. He phoned Deirdre. The hotel job's back on. Oh, you've got to ring him first thing in the morning. Blow that for a game of soldiers. Hello, uh, Mr. Conran, it's uh, Ray Langton. The wife tells me... Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, bright and early. Yeah, see ya. First thing Monday morning, bring the lads. Well, you make a start on that one, mm -hmm. and I'll get cracking on this. Now, you know that coat I was telling you about, the one with the big red fox collar? <laughs> so I was thinking about, you know, one of them microwave ovens. It doesn't oh, have to be one of the expensive ones. No. You can get them quite reasonable. Tomorrow at the same time, Annie and Bette both want pole position in the press. Next tonight on Plus Half an Hour with the Comedians. Shuffles, but it says quite clearly. What does that say? It says worth three pence off your next purchase. There you are, so it must be clear because she's practically illiterate. Look, it says that the offer closes the 31st of July. Yes, and there's more print, I suppose. Oh, yes, it is small print, but it's quite clear. And there's nothing wrong with my glasses, I'm sorry. There's a law against that, you know. Putting things in small print, they can't do it. They can, and they do, and that's all there is to it. So you won't honour it, then? I can't. It's September now. They'll not redeem it off me. Mm. I say the trickery they'll get up There's to. no trickery on my part. Oh, you could say that now, can you? Yes, I certainly can. Yes, well, let me tell you something. This came off a tub of margarine. And that tub of margarine came from this shop because you sold it to me last Thursday and that was August. Am I right? Dead right, Mrs Sharples. So you not only palm false old stock onto me, you dressed it up with false promises. Oh, for heaven's sake. I'm a fully paid up member of the Mafia and all. You sold me that margarine a month out of date, whether or no. All right, Mrs Sharples. To keep you happy, I'll give you the three pence. So you'll honour it, then? Yes, out of my own pocket. Ah, well, let's deeper than mine. One, six, nine, twelve pence off my coffee. Oh, blooming egg! <laughs> <laughs> Just 
is all there with the lemon drops, isn't she? No, it's not everything. Yes. And if that's a white five you're taking out of your bag, I've no change. Well, I'll change it. It must be worth more than the five in our days. I didn't see many of them when they were about. Oh, Stan had one once, just after the war. Thought he were Lord Muck. Mm. <laughs> no, I bet they made him put his name on the back of it, didn't they? Oh, yeah, they used to do that, didn't they? Yeah. You know, if you was an ordinary person, like. Because they wondered if you'd come by it honestly. <laughs> oh, we weren't supposed to have any money in them days. Uh, right, look, I'm not jumping the queue, but can I just slip this in? It's my order. I'll pick it up at lunchtime. I've got somebody coming. Yeah, there, sir. Right. Is there right. a tin of salmon on there? I bet there is if it's somebody posh. Yes, eh? but it's not quite royalty. Yeah, but you will be losing a guest soon, won't you? The lad isn't he due back at school. Oh, yes, that's right, Mr. Sharple. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, he is. Very true. Nice young man is growing into. I should be sorry to see him go. Oh, do you know, I couldn't live in Glasgow. Right, well, I'll call back later for that. Right, thank you. Could you? What? Live in Glasgow? I don't know Glasgow. Mm. Mrs. Sharples, just before you go, yeah. uh, would you like to put your name and address on back of these coupons? <laughs> oh, she's very comical, isn't she? Yes, very. <laughs> oh, no, that's one place I couldn't live, Glasgow. Can't understand a word they say. Mind you, Stan gets on very well with them. But then, of course, he's travelled a lot in the army, you know, so he does understand them more. Especially when he's had a few. Oh, he understands everything and nothing when he's had a few, you know what I mean? Do you know he could converse with a Mohican when he's had a few and neither of them would know the difference? Well, I call him the last of the Mohicans, you know, because there's no more like him. I mean, there couldn't be, could there? And I ought to know. <laughs> oh, but I could no more go and live in Glasgow. Hey, what did I come in here for? Oh, yes, um, I, um, I believe you've got a bit of damp coming through in your living room. Yes, that's right, Hilda. Yeah, well, it's these houses, you know. They're not what they were. And the weather this summer hasn't helped much either, has it? I mean to say, if a mouse can't be snug and dry in the summer, when can it be? Do you know, Stan, we're only saying this morning... What time will she be here, do you think? I don't know. She said first train she can manage, but I don't know what that means. About lunchtime, maybe? I tell you, I don't know. Sometime this afternoon. Any road, she'll be here, so don't you worry. Hey, wait a minute, that fellow goes on there. Oh, yeah. Is there going to be a lot of trouble? Well, they'll be having a talk. You mean a row? Look, all they're concerned about is your interests. You know that, don't you? Stuck, it won't come out. Oh, well, never mind, get out. You go and take yourself out. I know where to go. Well, that's the daftest thing I've heard. There's always somebody kicking a football about. Unless Elsie Tanner slotted them all. I don't feel it going out. No, oh, no, you get outside, you'll be all right. They get in my nerves, the guys around no, here. Look, you're only just saying that. No, I'm not. They say I talk different, and then they put on this silly voice. They're just stupid. Yeah, well, maybe they have, but they can't help it. And you're all taking no notice. I don't. Of course, you can go to the swimming bath. Well, we've already been to the baths. Hey, I'll play a game of rummy. I'll play a game of crib. I don't know it. Well, I'll, I'll teach you. The best card game going there is is crib. Mind you, there's a lot to it, but you'll soon pick it up. Is it complicated? Well, uh, you'll soon get the idea. We'll have to pass and examine it. Well, I never passed any exam or anything, and I'm pretty hard to beat at this game. Well, didn't you ever do any exams? Not one? Well, not any GCE. I mean, they didn't have them then. I wish I'd been alive then instead of now. Well, you must be daft then. Things are a lot better nowadays. Well, I'm not good at exams on club. I'm just no good. Now, you know that's not true. It's just that you haven't studied hard enough. Now, look, this is the cribbage board. It's got woodworm. You've got to be serious. You know, I wish you'd tell my dad that feeling a few rotten old levels isn't the be-all and end-all. He thinks it is. He's only thinking of your good. Well, I wish he wouldn't. I wish he'd just leave me alone. No, lad, you don't mean that. Yes, I do. I want to finish with school on club, but I'm fed up with it. I just hope that Gran's in my side. At least. And Steve, tell them this afternoon or they can forget it. We go someplace else. I'm just about up to here with Libbins. Last Monday, they said they want a bomb under them. Yes, they do. They're nearly as bad as us. Yeah, well, at least we try. And what do you want, anyway? I don't want anything. Then what are you standing there for? Get back out there and start cracking I the... am standing here because you asked me to come in, so I came in. Since then, you have made two telephone calls, bawled out Stephen, said things I couldn't possibly repeat about that poor little man from Libman's. <sighs> you sure I asked you to come in here? Mm-hmm. Well, what for? That's what I'm waiting to find out. Uh, I probably had some brilliant idea. Oh, no, I know what it was. Uh, where's a good place to take a fella in the afternoon? 
You don't really want me to answer that one, do you? Oh, no, come on now. Somewhere different, not one of your usual she beans. I've got to take him somewhere good. Who? I have got the buyer coming from Rhonda's. Oh. Yeah, and what am I going to do with him? Well, show him around this place, full stop. No, he's a bit of a boy. I've done my homework on him. Mm. Well, I don't know where the boys go anymore. Oh, come on, Else. You yeah. must know this place inside out. Seriously? Still, I must suppose there must be some places in Manchester. Yeah, but he's probably been taken to them before. Look, if you really want to find that, I suppose Ron would know. Who's Ron? Well, Ron's a taxi driver, I know. I don't think there's a stone in Manchester. He doesn't know what's crawling underneath it. So, ask Ron. Well, that might be a bit difficult now. I don't think he's on in the daytime. Well, that's a fat lot of good. Look, seriously, take him round here. Them girls are practically singing right now. Well, that makes a change, doesn't it? All right, I'll handle him. You get back out there and lead the community singing. Who oh, else? Do you honestly not know where the boys go these days? No, I do not. And furthermore, I have no desire to know. Huh, you do surprise me. Oh, very encouraging, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, it would be if they weren't all so drippy. Did you read that in the paper, Betty? What was that, Joe? They've done a survey. There's more men than women now. Used to be the other way around. Now there's more fellas. Means we can pick and choose. <laughs> I can't help feeling it's come a little bit late for me, Chuck. <laughs> Hear that, Stanley. Your days are numbered. There's not enough women to go around. Oh, I... He's not bothered, are you? Well, if anybody's short, I've got one going cheap. Oh, oh you horrible man, Stanley Ogden. You don't know you're born. You don't deserve a wife to love you and comfort you and take care of your every need. I don't know. If he deserves anybody, it's Hilda. Uh, Stick one in there. Oh, you horrible. <laughs> They'll be after your Hilda. All sorts of unmarried men. Young men just begging for his favours. And they'll still be drippy, only they'll be desperate. And there's nothing worse than a desperate drip. There's too many fellas anyway. There always was. Speak for yourself. They've got us brainwashed. The truth is, we don't need them. They're only aggravation. I don't know if anybody's ever told you, but the human race would die out without them. You know this one? She's got one ambition in life. That's been wed and pushing a pram like Deirdre Langton. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you have. Anyway, I've still got to meet one of this vast crowd. Surface first, yeah. Why don't you put an advert in Rini's window? You'd get plenty. Thank you very much. Hey, you could always stick an ad in the personal column. They're always there, you know. Attractive 45 year old wishes I'm to meet. I'm not quite 45 yet. You're not attractive either, but they always fib a bit. At least I can be honest about my age. Hello, Edith. You all right? Yes, thank you. Good. Well, you'll be ready for some lunch, then. Well, I'm not really bothered about lunch. Oh, all the same, uh, you want something to eat before, uh, well, you have something to eat. I'm not the one who's starting anything, Kenneth, so let's get a few things straight. Now, look, Edith, I'm sorry, but I'm not prepared to have an argument. Aren't you? Well, I am. Oh, what are you going to say to him, Gran? Whatever it is, keep your temper. You're not getting any far without Ken if you lose your rag. I didn't come all this way to be pleasant, Albert. <laughs> Yeah, Tyler. See, I'm taking your advice. Oh, I always said you were nobody's fool. Mind you, it's not many as wash them pies down with scotch. Ah, well, the gravy lubricates the pies, and the scotch lubricates, uh, well, other things. Mm, like big business. Oh, can he put it away? You change. That's all right, love. Have one yourself. Oh, it's very much. I thought it was out. There you are. Cheers. Ooh. I don't mean to be told. You've been in here all morning. I've not been in here. I just popped my nose in. <laughs> Do it today, you said. Do it today. I'm doing it. I'm in the course of doing it. In the course of? I'm trying to find new paint for the ceiling. Well, you're not trying very hard. But they haven't got the right colour, so they tell me. Well, don't bother telling me. Just get it done. That's all I want. And they haven't got the right colour because it's been deleted. Do you know what that means? Deleted. I know perfectly well what it means. It means you'll be in here while closing time. It means you've got another flaming excuse. You think you can just walk off. Now, see, you've ruined that wall, you've ruined my memorial, you've ruined the entire room, and you've ruined next door's living room and all. Somebody here. I will not shush, not until I see that wall completely redecorated. And you needn't look for muggins to do it, neither. Look, tell me the colour of paint you want, as long as it's not been deleted. The old paint was old, wasn't it? The tins were rusty. That's why they flogged them to you. You're always after something cheap, aren't you? If you want quality, you've got to pay for it. And you're a fool if you don't. That's my motto. 
Well, I'm very glad to hear it, Stanley. Because we're going down there now and I'm going to choose the best paint they've got and you're going to pay for it because that's your motto. And what's more, you're going to put it on that ceiling because that's my motto, so I'm telling you. Well, the big clothes for lunch now is no good. Oh, no, they won't. You're coming with me. She's warming a pie up for me. That's not to what I'll have warming for you if you don't come. Oh, no eh? And another thing. If them next door ask you about Dan, you don't know nought about it, right? They'll hear too, won't they? Anybody else has got fame in ears. Oh, shut up. And don't tell me to shut up, either. Check tall pipes, I know he has. Well, you tell him to check again, it might just be weeping. He had a flipping weep and it doesn't stop. Hello, love. A bag of crisps, please. Now then, what flavour would you like? Porridge, because we've run straight out of Agis. Cheese and onion. <laughs> I don't think that little joke was appreciated there, really. It should be all right. It's the same I do on him every time he comes in. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's beyond help. I'll see you. Tell Alan. Yes, I know it's difficult, Edith, but, uh, well, it makes it even more difficult if you take the whole thing as personal criticism, because that's not what it's Do you think? Be. Do you really think that that's all I'm on about? Well, obviously, it does go through your mind. You don't know the first thing about what goes through my mind. Well, no, possibly not, but what I'm trying to say is that I don't think we'll gain anything by having great big rows. No? Oh, no. No. No, you say what's what and the rest of us just jump through hoops. That's how it's supposed to be, is it? Yes. Look, Edith, I know you think I've made some sort of arbitrary decision that I'm being selfish or that I'm attacking you or trying to make Peter jump through some hoops that I think are important, but believe me, it isn't like that at all. It's much simpler than that. I have a responsibility to decide what is best for Peter. And when I've decided, I have a responsibility to see that the best thing is done, whatever the cost. Now, am I right? You don't say anything about anybody's feelings. I don't people's feelings come into it. Edith, whenever any two people have a row, one of them always asks that question. It's part of the rhetoric of having a row, and I, I refuse to answer. Oh, God almighty, you're impossible. I really do believe you're peculiar. You don't understand about people's feelings, do you? You don't even understand that they have feelings. <laughs> yes, well, uh, I'm not going to hurl insults. I'm not insulting you, Kenneth. I'm just trying to understand you. Since Valerie died, I've been a mother to them, Peter and Susan. Now, you'll not deny that. Of course I don't deny that. Will you leave those dishes alone? Just for a minute. I've been a mother to them and sometimes a bit more. I know that, honestly, and believe me, Oh, I... for God's sake, Kenneth, please, don't say you're grateful. Now, just admit it suited you. You can't deny that. It did suit you. And did it suit Peter? Well, isn't that what I'm saying? No, it isn't. You're talking about me, or perhaps you. Now, let's just talk about Peter. All right. Let's do that. Now, you've just said, or as good as, that it suited him very well, and you're right. Because he's been happy with me, they both have. And now you want to completely uproot him. Yes, I know, it's a very big thing to do. It's a completely unnecessary thing no, to no, do. No, no, it's not unnecessary, because his needs have changed. Oh, don't be ridiculous. No, I'm not being ridiculous, they're growing up and their needs change. You're telling me about children growing up. I think I've watched that process more closely than you have. Well, if that's merely meant to be a wounding remark, it's unworthy of it. Oh, don't get on your high horse. I'm simply saying that I know something about children growing up, that's all. Yes, well, so do I, and I also happen to know something about their education, because, if you remember, I've been a long time in the business, and the important question now is getting Peter's education sorted out. Is that more important than the child's happiness, passing a couple of exams? Look, it's not a question of that, Edith. It's, now, it's... answer me. Just answer me. Is it more important? Edith, it's time that both you and I faced one very important fact. The fact that in hardly more than a year or two, Peter's happiness will not depend on you or me. The responsibility will not be yours or mine, it'll be his. You'll have to rely on his own resources and his own abilities. His future happiness will depend on what he can make of his own abilities, whatever they are, and he's got to start trying to make something of them now, and I'm going to make sure that he does. Now, he's coming back here to live with me, and there's no argument about it. All right, you can say that I'm doing what suited me, that I'm failing to fulfill my duties, oh, my obligations. But look, this time that. in my son's life, I have a contribution to make. And I'm going to make it. And what about your daughter? She hasn't been mentioned. No, well, she's obviously all right. The same exams that Peter failed miserably, and she just sailed through. She's obviously all right. Oh, so Susan can continue to live with me, can she? I mean, I would like to be told. Well, that's up to you. I mean, if you're not willing. To... Oh! Well, just a minute. Now, this is my house. And I noticed I haven't been asked my opinion about the lad, whether he's coming to live here. Well, he's coming to live with me. And if you don't want us to live here, I'll find somewhere else. Well, Peter, I suppose your father could be right. Mm. Uh, 
Look, can I get Mr. Baldwin to ring you back when he comes in? <sighs> yes, certainly. Yes, yes, I'll tell him that the moment he comes out of his meeting. Thank you. Uh, Lemster and Hayes. I'll get him to find you when he comes out of his meeting. He did that very well. <laughs> no need to ask how it went. Went very well. I thought it was supposed to be a quick pie over the road. Had a pie over the road, then we went downtown. Oh, I... If I told you there was a deputation of girls outside, would you be ready to see them? Oh, what do you want? Three hours for lunch. Ah, uh, will you send them in? Send them in here, I'll tell them what a three-hour working lunch is like. Been all going. <laughs> See, I will have that coffee after all. Where did it take you in the end? Well, you told me. The, uh, black hole of somewhere. Oh, the frost of the drinks. Whoa. Well, did you get the order? <laughs> it's in the bag. It's in the bag. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have fancied a bird out down this place. Oh, I. <laughs> yeah, all in the right place. She had more right places than those birds, I tell you. Bit big, though. <coughs> if you don't mind a big, I mean, it's one of my weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to come down here sometime. Oh. I think we just ought to pack him off home, don't you? Well, it's practically time anyway. Yeah. He's not driving. Well, can you stop him? <laughs> I can stop him. <coughs> There's a good lad. There's my little fella. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, taking these off you. Yeah. I thought you were taking them out, didn't hey. you? I like big girls. I'll get the taxi, yeah. <laughs> now, what do they come under? It's all right. I've got a number. You can't possibly yeah. forget it. Oh, now, what is it? I think I'll go back to the hotel. Now, you just have a cup of coffee. We'll get a taxi for you. Well, what a taxi for? I've got a jagger outside, knows his own wound. Yeah, but you don't. You're taking a taxi. Oh, now leave it out, else I've got... I've got... Have you taken my car keys? I should have known there was no point in coming. Oh, there you got my sympathy. He's been a bit high-handed. I suppose he could be right. Perhaps it is my fault he's not done so well in his exams. Well, then how is it Susan did so well? Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Look, the lad's not that way minded. I've had a long talk to him. And he, he's a real tetlock. And the tetlock fellas did no time for learning. No time at all. Bit of nose with the tetlock. Bit of nose and you can't go far wrong. Oh, I agree. He's a tatlock, all right. Oh, he is that. Takes after our Valerie and she weren't short on top. No, she wasn't. But when it comes to book learning... It is important these days, though. Yeah, I've heard I can say that. Look at him. He got a degree at his university and look where it's got him. Oh, well. That's his business. He yeah. does what he wants. I suppose so. Well, there's a lot who've done as well, if not better than him, they never got an honour at the university. Look, I don't want to go to university and I told them that. But we're not talking about you. Hey, would you like a game of crib? OK. He's picked it up, just like that he has. I'm your lad. Uh, get the board. Do you know what my trouble is? I give up. Too easy. Aye. I'll stop over. Well, uh, I suppose we can fit you in somewhere. Oh, I can stop at a hotel if I've got to. But I'm not going back yet. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> I thought I recognised that voice. Oh, it's you. Who else did you expect? I listen out on that radio, you know. That's amazing, because I didn't send for you in my own name. <laughs> you couldn't fool our Lisa in the radio room. One for you, Ron, she said. Oh, yes, and how many more are there on Ron's list? <laughs> well, where do you want to go? I don't want to go anywhere, love. That's your fare. When you finish chatting up my stuff. Oh, that's all right, any time now. The best laid schemes. Uh, where are we going to, sir? The best laid mice often go astray. <laughs> That's what the poet said, wasn't it? You know who he was, don't you? Okay. You know who he was? Red Indian. Who was? Okay. Oakland's <laughs> Hotel. Do you know where it is? Okay. Do you need a hand? No, no, thanks. Don't worry, sir. We'll get you home. Why don't you come back and have a drink, eh? Yes. yes. Ed, don't worry, sir. That'll be all right. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Yes, if you pass it. It's not unknown. <laughs> Well, I've never seen him like that before. Yeah, I thought he could put him away, but he's met his match this time. 
Come on, let's go home. There's nobody in the place except us. You, me and a strong smell of alcohol. <laughs> £1.40, sir. Sorry, Brian, it's my... Ah, now I'm clear out. Hang on, what's that? <laughs> 22 pence, isn't it? <laughs> Here, look. You come in, Has a chair. Yeah, 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 come on. Have a little drink, girl. It's quite all right, sir. I'm a friend of Elsie's. I'll trust you. Oh, that's very nice of you. Peter, hmm? I'll be going home in the morning. We have only just come. Yes, I know, love, but I'll have to get back. Now, if you want to come with me, it's entirely up to you. But if you do, just have your bag packed in the morning. Right, now then, where have we got to it? You haven't been looking at my cards, have you? Right. Now, let's see. It's your box, isn't it? Right, I'll throw you a couple of nasty ones. Right, is that it now, Mrs. Sharples? Come round, you. Wait, you know, I haven't finished yet. Don't usually get you patronising my frozen foods, Mrs. Sharples. No, you don't, because it's most of it muck. It's only fit for those that are too idle to cook a proper dinner for themselves. Not everybody has time for cooking now. And if they had, half of them wouldn't be capable of cooking out worth eating. No, I was just looking in here because I fancied something a bit different. These shrimps are all right. Of course they are. They're very nice. But they taste nicer out of a paper bag or Morecambe prom. And they're a wicked price. Yeah, but it does save train fare, you know, to Morecambe. <laughs> Hello, love. Off to work. Well, I thought I'd better show Willie. Good morning, Mrs. Sharpens. Is it nice out? It is, and has been for hours. Oh, well, I'll take your word for it and leave it out. I'm a night bird, me. Hey, Reen, have you thought what you're doing for our tea tonight? Me, give us a chat. Oh, well, let's have some at good, eh? Some of that's looped over a gate. None of that rubbish out frozen food cabinet. Do you mind? I've just got Mrs. Sharples hovering on the brink of a shrimp. Shan't bother. Oh, hello. It's going to be one of them days, is it? Putting people off their dinners. I knew I should have stopped in bed. Hi, Ken. Hello. Morning. 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 No need to queue behind me. You can go and get what you want. Are you sure? I wouldn't have offered if I was. Besides, I've one or two questions I'd like to ask mm -hmm. you. I thought there might be a small forfeit to make. Uh, can I have half a pound of gammon, please, Reenie? Really? Yeah. Cut fairly thick. Right. You've got a bit of a full house, haven't you, with Edith Thapot down there? And the house must be bursting at the seams. Yes, it is, rather. Don't tell me she can't abide being parted from there, Peter, for a few weeks. Well, it's just a flying visit, Mrs. Sharples. Hmm. It's a long way to come for a flying visit and expensive train fares being what they are. Yes. She doesn't because she's enjoying herself very much. I saw her last night. She's a face like a line of work washing. Really? Have we Um, a pound of tomatoes as well. Oh. So she's taking the lad back with her, is she? He's going back to school, is he? And then on to university and that? Yes, he's going back to school, Mrs. Sharples. But not in Glasgow. He's stopping down here with me. Oh, is he? Well, I'm very glad to hear that. I think a lad's place is with his dad. Yes. I bet he did that lot isn't all that suited. What about your Peter? What does he think about it? Thank you. How much is that? I am sick of filling in one silly government form after another. Yeah, well, somebody's got to do it, love. And I can't see why. Most of them are a complete waste of time. It's what is known as job creation, you see. It makes a job for the fellow that sends out the forms, and it makes another job for the fellow that throws them away after you fill them in and send them back again. Mm. It also gives you something to do. Yeah, well, I'd rather be doing something a bit more constructive. <laughs> hello, Baldwins. Oh, hello, Mr. Murray. Uh, do you want to speak to Mr. Baldwin? Hang on. Do you know where he is? I'll find him in the sewing room. Right. I beg your pardon, Mr. Murray. No, 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 he's not far away. We can get him. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Right. I will. OK. Yes, yes, I've got that. Ta-da. 
That was Jack Murray, Mike's drinking partner yesterday. Have we paid our latest service in bill yet? Because if we haven't, hold it. They don't get a penny until they can send someone to do a proper job on those machines. Oh, well, we paid it last week. Blast! We're going to have to find another phone. Uh, Mr Baldwin, Jack Murray's just been on the phone. Oh, yeah? He said to tell you he had a great time yesterday and thanks very much for completing his education in Manchester clubs. And? Well, he said to tell you, no hard feelings, but he's put that order with Cottoms. There you are. The rotten, dirty, uh, uh, stinky, uh, loud... There is a lady present. He did say maybe next time. To hell with next time. And to hell with him as well. Old Chinese proverb, man who counts chickens gets egg on his face. Oh, what's so funny? Well, he is. He spent a fortune on that fella yesterday and came in with a hangover like the Leaning Tower of Pisa and all for nothing. Uh, I don't think it's funny myself. Ah, well, that's because you're a fella, love. <laughs> Come in. Hello. Hello, Rome. What brings you here? Boss about. Oh, you've just missed him. Yes, mind you, you haven't missed much. He's like a bear with a sore head this morning. Not surprised the way he was last night. Yeah. Oh, how did you go on? Did you get him to his hotel all right? Oh, no problems. He wasn't feeling any pain. The only thing was he didn't have any cash on him, and uh, that's why I'm here. Collect the fare. Mm. Trust him to mess you about like that. Oh, that was no problem, really. Anyway, I was in the neighbourhood. It makes a break. Gets the cab off the road for a bit and me out of the cab. Well, he must be somewhere about. I'll see if I can round him up. Uh, take a chair. Oh, thanks. Uh, that seems... Uh, Nice lad. Oh, Steve. Oh, yes, he is. Mind you, I'm a rotten judge of fellas. I, I always have been. About time, too. Don't be setting out. There's more than you want serving, you know. I'm not kidding you. It gets slower and slower, the service, in here. It's like watching a couple of snails with shell shock. And I suppose you think you should go to the front of the queue and everybody else should bow down and just let you? Look, just get us a large scotch, will you? That's what I admire about you Londoners. Those smooth, polished, cosmopolitan manners. Hey, what sort of night ball? Well, today's really got it on, haven't you? Have got out of bed on the wrong side? Probably not even the right bed. You know more about that sort of thing than I do. <laughs> hey, what can we do if he comes over here and says who's watching the shop? We'll slide out before he does. Right. <laughs> well, thank you, Stanley. I'll have another light out. You are? You heard? I thought we'd get no song. Well, you know what Thorpe did. Followed a muck out and thought it were a wedding. Look, I'm skin. I'm not going to do that decorating today, you know. <laughs> Give us a pint, though, but he's got a chance. And he wants another light bottle and all. Oh, right. Oh, you'll finish it, Stan. You'll just keep going till you do. I've no money for paint. Uh, that'll be 46p, lovey. <laughs> you think I've made her money? I'll get you some more paint, don't worry. <laughs> Excuse me. I've been looking all over for you. So now you've found me. Hey, you wanted back at the factory. I sometimes wonder why the hell I pay you. I mean, I can't leave the place for five minutes without something cropping up. Hey, what's wrong with you? Uh, this is something a bit personal, you know. Uh, you know you got a taxi back last night. What about it? I'm trying to tell you. The taxi driver's back at the factory. You forgot to pay him. Rubbish. I'm only telling you what you said. Something I never do, I always pay. Oh, you might have forgot, you know. You were a bit sloshed last night. I'm telling you, I always pay. Sure, I was a bit sloshed last night. That's why this bloke's trying to pull one on. Yeah, I soon sort him out. Do come on, Peter. We're going to miss that train, you know. Well, there's plenty more trains. No, no, off you go, Peter. It's all for the best. It'll save a lot of trouble. Mind, I'm not saying he won't come dashing after you, but I'll do my best to stop him. Thanks, Uncle Albert. I'll probably see you at Christmas then, eh? Mm, I can't see you before then. Now off you go and take care. Yeah, I will. What did I tell you? It's your dad. Right. Gammon and fried tomatoes for lunch. How does that? What's going on? She's taking Peter back to Glasgow. We've been hanging on and hanging on so we could say goodbye, Ken. Come on then, Peter. Say goodbye to your dad and let's get off. He's not going anywhere. We're getting that train. He's coming home where he belongs and that's the whole of it. It's no good, Edith. You get on that train as and when you like, but Peter's stopping here with me. This is his home now and this is where he's going to stay. 
<laughs> no, seriously, though, I don't know where Mike is. He got me in the factory. Or Steve would have found him by now. Oh, I'll give him a few more minutes. I'm enjoying the break. That's if I'm not in the way. Oh, no, I'm glad I have a sit down anyway. Hey, to tell you the truth, I've forgotten what I came to see Mike for. Keeps you busy, does it, the job? Well, not the job so much as keeping them girls sweet out there. Well, if ever you need any help. <laughs> They'd eat you for breakfast. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Mike, this is Ron. It was a uh, taxi we put you in last night. Sure, I know who is. You know, I, I could have sworn you wouldn't remember me from last night. You'd be surprised, but I can remember. Now, what's all this about affair? Well, if you remember last night so well, you'll know. No, you tell me. What's there to tell? I picked you up here and I dropped you off at your hotel. Right, sir. What's all the palaver? Oh, no, no, no palaver on my part. No, it's just that you didn't have any money, you didn't pay me, and I'm here to collect. Of course I've paid you. I've never got out of a cab without paying before in my life. No, sir, you think you remember last night so well. It's obvious to me you don't. You see, when we got there, I, I had to help you out of the cab. Sure, I had to drop too much, but I paid you. The fare was one pound forty. You fumbled in your pockets and said, I've no cash. And I said, all right, it'll do tomorrow. And that's like now. I uh, think we could get out the petty cash. No, we can't. This bloke's trying it on. Just because I had a few too much last night, he's trying to work a double fare. I, I'll, I'll, I'll pretend I never heard that, sir. For the same reason I let you get out of the cab last night without paying, because I happen to be a friend of Elsie's here, and uh, you're her boss. But I, I, w I wouldn't like it to repeat it. I'll say what I think. I'm trying to steal your money, that's I what you're I didn't say anything about it, stealing. I it amounts to the same thing. Please, Mac, I think you're making a mistake about Elsie, this. Elsie, will you keep out of this, please? Look, sir. Do you think or imagine I'd waste time and petrol coming round here to swindle you out of one pound forty? If that's what you think, we'll both get our brains examined. After which they'll put you in a nice little room where there's no sharp edges on the furniture. Don't you get funny with me. <laughs> I don't find it a bit funny, sir, but... You see, you owe me a small sum of money. And I'm here to collect it. Because I'm owed it. Ah, what the hell. Perhaps I didn't play you last night, but I mean, for one pound fault, it's just not worth all the aggravation, is it? Here. Oh, uh... Thank you, sir. You might as well have a tip. Uh, I, I wouldn't like to leave you financially embarrassed, and I wouldn't like you to think either that I was grateful. So I tell you what, you keep that towards your next taxi. And I just hope it isn't mine. Senior. Don't forget. Well, I hope you're satisfied. You are behaving like a little kid with a broken teddy. I'll leave it out, will you, else? You want to be careful who you pick on next time. He made you look like a right Charlie. I'm sorry, but in this case, what Peter wants and what he needs are not necessarily the same thing. He wants to stay with me where he's been since his mother died. That's what she'd have wanted, our Val. No, Edith, you don't know what our Val would have wanted. Oh, yes, I do. She was my daughter. Look, I do that, know. There's absolutely no point in arguing about what Peter's mother would or would not have wanted. If Val was still alive, the situation wouldn't have arisen. Oh, no, that's true. And with all due respect, Edith, I think we should try to keep Val out of this. Let's try not to get emotional. Well, you may be able to. But I brought the lad up and I can't help being upset about it. Yes, but you must agree that what we're trying to do is sort out what's best for Peter. Now, if we keep dragging Val in it, we're just going to have a lot of emotional rows. But it's you. There wasn't any row till you started wanting to change all the arrangements. Why can't I decide where I'm going to live? Why can't I? Well, I'll try and explain that to you, Peter. You might not like it, but bluntly, it's that at 15, you're not the best judge. You may think you are, but you're not. As your father, it's up to me to tell you that, even though it might antagonise you. He does right, Peter. Oh, but... I'm sorry, it is, but he's right. At Peter's age, there's lots of things you can't weigh up properly. But he's perfectly all right with me and his granddad. No, he isn't. Failing his exams proved that. You think we brought him up wrong, do you? You think he's turned out badly, do you? No, I don't think anything of the sort. You've done a wonderful job. Peter's a fine boy and I'm proud of him. But look, we're not talking about the past now. We're talking about the future. He's all right with us. Yes, but he can do better here. I want him to have a complete change, a new school, and he can buckle down to his own levels and take them again. But I'm no good at it, Dad. I just can't do it. That's a lie, and you know it. Look, Peter, I'm not going to make you do anything beyond your abilities. I'm not going to cram the work down you, but I think you can do far better than you've done so far. And the effort you put in, in the next two years, is going to be vital to your life. Well, he can take the exams again in Glasgow. He needs supervision, Edith, and he needs help with his work, and I can give him that. Well, I think it's a lot of fuss about nothing. 
Some lads aren't cut out for exams and all that. And anyway, he wants to get a job. He's told you that himself. Look, it's a complete fantasy, Peter. There just aren't any jobs for people in your position. It's tough enough even with qualifications. You don't talk any sense, Peter. Well, you can all say what you like. But he wants to come home. He's happy with me and his granddad, and that's the main thing. He's staying here, Edith. You can't make him if he doesn't want to. Oh, yes, I can, and if I have to, I will. Look, I want Peter to understand it's best for him to stay here. But if he doesn't, he's still staying. And if I have to, I'll use the law. You wouldn't do that. I know what Peter needs, and I'm going to see that he gets it. Well, I think it's cruel, taking the lad away from his home. Well, don't start crying, Dan. I can't help it. He doesn't care how we feel, neither of us. Him and his dumb principles, he's always been the same. It's for Peter's good, Edith. I think it's for your good. Look, maybe he's right. Pardon? Well, maybe it is best if I stop down here. I mean, I'll always come and see you in the school holidays. I could do that, couldn't I? Of course you can. Don't you want to come home? I think I better just do as my dad says. Hello, Chuck. Uh, can I have a packet of dried peas? Treat for Stan, you know. Soak them overnight and then he can have his favourite tomorrow. He loves mushy peas. Have you ever tried soaking them in beer, Hilda? No, how well, they like it. I've no idea. I've only just thought about it. You, uh, you try it on your Stan. Make a wonderful gist for a Chinese restaurant. Oh. <laughs> how's, your, um, how's your decorating going? Oh, it's finished. I'll stay up half the night to get it done. Mind you, it needed it. I don't know, it looked really nasty, you know, with that damp stain. Yeah. Done a good job, has he? Oh, smashing, yeah. Mm. Woodwork and all. What colour? Beige. Oh. Uh, I don't suppose uh, you'd have any of that paint left, would you? Why? Are you doing some decorating, Hilda? Oh, oh well, not decorating, no. No, it's just uh, someone Stan wants to touch up in the bedroom. And beige would be just the right colour. Well, as a matter of fact, with the biggest part of a tin left, but... I reckon we'll keep it, you know, to see if we can put it to some use. <laughs> oh, it's dangerous, that, you know. Oh, having a tin of paint once it's been opened. Well, it gives off fumes, you see. That's why painters have to drink a lot of milk. And you wouldn't want Alf having to drink a lot of milk, would you? Oh, no. Oh, not with the weight he carries, no. Oh, no, if you've got a tin of paint what's been opened, you want to get shut of it. Well, I reckon we'll find something to paint, Hilda. Even beige. Well, you'll have to be quick, cos it goes hard in no time. Oh, and, um... When it's gone hard, does it still give off fumes? Or is it only radiation I have to be worried about? Pardon? You really want this paint, don't you, Hilda? Uh, oh, well, uh, only if you're chucking it out, that's all. <laughs> Wait there. There you are, Hilda. Oh. I reckon you've worked very hard for that. And by the heck, if they were giving out badges for cadging, you'd have a chest full. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello. Yeah, of course he can. No, it's not inconvenient at all. Yeah, what to I see ya. Oh, don't tell me you've got one of your flaming boyfriends coming round just when I felt like flopping in front of the telly. Oh, it's not my boyfriend, it's yours. Wrong. You know the taxi driver fella? He is not my boyfriend. You could have fooled out. He is not my boyfriend. And anyway, next time he rings up and, and wants to come round, just you consult me first, madam. Thank you very it much. It wasn't him that rung, it was his... Uh, what's control. Mm, that means he's within spitting distance, doesn't it? Oh, Elsie, what's it like, eh? Having a swain cruising about in a taxi, dreaming of excuses to come and see He you. is not my swain. Oh, so when he knocks on the door, I'll tell him to get lost, eh? He'll do no such thing. And just don't take too much for granted, madam. If he's not your boyfriend, why are you doing your face? It's an old-fashioned custom called pride in Mon's appearance, that's all. He's just a friendly acquaintance. Oh, he's keen on you, though, I can tell. I've told you, he's just friendly, that's all. How come? Well, wipe that smile off your face, you. What smile? Evening, Elsie. Hello. Hello, Ron. What are you doing here? We've just been here about your bust up with Mike Baldwin. According to Elsie, you shot him down in flames. Well, I think he saw a crash on takeoff. Ah, uh, yes, well, there's not many people can deal with Mike Baldwin when he decides to get stroppy. It might do him some good. I doubt it. Mm. Well, I'm sorry you had all that aggro, Rum. Ah, no problem, really. You get used to that driving a taxi. Remind me to tell you a few tales from your hair needs, Curly. Listen, Elsie, I've got about an hour's break. Would you like a drink? 
What, now? I've, I've only just come home, really. All right, then, a couple before you get set, all right? Why not? Come on. <laughs> There you are, my lovey. Thank, Thank you. It's a funny thing, like, isn't it? I mean, take Reenie and Alf Roberts. What about him? Well, they wouldn't have had to decorate if you hadn't let our bath overflow. And if they hadn't had to decorate, they wouldn't have had that paint left over for us to have the use of. So what? So, it just goes to show. It's an ill wind, but has no turning. Oh, but that paint they got from them is matte. We wanted gloss. Oh, trust you to find a fly in the ointment. It's free, isn't it? You can't get the same finish with Matt. Oh, you can't conduct a proper conversation, you. Oh, way up. Hey, got a new fella in tow, I see. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, uh, what do you fancy? I'll order. I'll have a vodka and slimline tonic, yep. please. Who's your friend, then? Okay. What makes you think he's a friend, Hilda? Well, yeah, you're drinking with him. Yeah. Ah, yes, but I often drink with you. That doesn't mean to say we're friendly, does it? I've, uh, I've ordered. Shall we have a seat? Yeah, good idea. Thank you. Yeah, should you be drinking, taxi driver? Straight to managers. I never touch anything stronger until the cab's well put to bed for the night. You take this job seriously, don't you? I like that. It's just a job. Well, I reckon you have to take what you do seriously because you're doing it for most of your waking hours, aren't you? Um, am I mistaken? Are we being observed from the bar? You're not mistaken. That is Okai Dilderugdon. Friend of yours, is she? Uh, neighbor. Yeah. Difference noted and understood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you are. Thank you, love. Oh, thank you. Oh, you know, uh, neighbours and relations are just the same, aren't they? You have to take what you're given. Yeah, but you can choose your friends. You know, a pal of mine once told me, he said, friends are God's apology for the gosh awful relations he lumbers you with. No, <laughs> <laughs> that to be true, mind you. I'll have lots of nosy questions asked about you. Still, I won't be able to answer them, will I? Because I don't know, do I? Oh, well, I'm in the same fix about you, aren't I? Mind you, I've uh, noticed a few things, made a few guesses, like there's no man around the house, but there uh, used to be one. Divorced. Quite recently, really. Still, it's a long story. It's the uh, second time around for me. So there you are. The other was a long time ago, so I made a mess of marriage twice. It takes two to make a mess of a marriage, Chelsea. Are you speaking from experience? All right. I'm a married man, on paper. I haven't seen her for five years, and uh, we never got round to divorce. Any kids? Yeah. yeah. I've got a daughter. Oh, she's grown up now, a smashing girl. I see a lot of her. Yeah, I wish you could see a lot of mine. Boy and a girl. Both a long way away. Well, still and all, these two young lasses, they keep, they keep you on the go. <laughs> yes, they do, don't they? And they're very fond of you. So if you want to call around any time and I'm not there, you'll still be sure of a very warm welcome. <laughs> Captain for me, Albert. Well, I've got to see every two minutes. Ah, uh, I can call William, can't I? Of course you can. I don't know what I'm going to say to his granddad and Susan. Oh, well, just tell them it's the Peter's future. Well, you've had your own way. And if it's not the best thing for him, it's your fault. It's you to blame. Good bye, love. Bye, Gran. Don't worry, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Remember, you've always got a home with us. Always. Give Grandad and Susan my love, and if you see Alex and Tom, tell, well, tell them I'll write to them. Bye bye. Alex and Tom are friends of yours, are they? Yeah, my best friends. Oh, you'll miss them then. I expect you will. It'll be all right, Peter, I promise you. This is the best thing for you, you know. I mean, you may not think so now, but trust me. That's all I have. Just trust me. Please, up. Don't blame me if it goes cold with standing. Hey, you're not dressed. We're going to be late. I feel terrible. Well, everyone feels terrible this time of morning. No, I mean really terrible. Pains in me, Tommy. Really gripey. Mm, you do look a bit rough, but then that's normal for you, isn't it? Thank you very much. I could be dying here and I'd get no sympathy. 
Well, get dressed. Let's go to the shop. If you're going to die, do it in the boss's time, not your own. Do you have a good mind to take the day off? I think I would if I thought you could cope on your own. What do you mean, if I could cope? I could run that boutique standing on my head. Did I hear somebody mention tea? Ah, oh, it's on the table. Do you want some toast? Oh, no, I couldn't face it the way my stomach feels this morning. Are you feeling bad as well? My stomach's playing havoc with me. Aren't you well, love? Look, you take the day off if you like. I'm manageress at that boutique. I say who has the day off. Oh, isn't it pathetic? Clutching to Paula, life is slowly ebbing away. And don't mock her. She must be rough if she feels as bad as I do. Must have been some up we had. Stands to reason if we're both feeling manky. No, I feel all right. Oh, well, of course. Your stomach's like your heart. Cast iron. What did we eat last night? Chicken salad. She made it. There was nothing wrong with that chicken. I had twice as much as you two. You had none at all, Elsie. Yeah, well, chicken tastes like no these days, doesn't it? Oh. Look, are you all right, love? Let me ring for the doctor, eh? Oh, I'm all right. I think I will take the day off, though. I'll go to the doctor later if I don't feel any better. All right. I better get off and all. I don't want to go, but I suppose I better show me face in that factory. They can't do without me. Come on, Birchill, you're going to be late. No, it's not me that's going to be late. It's her. The late Gail Potter. Very funny. For that, you're out of the will. Is any more tea in that pot? Yeah, I might just manage to squeeze the last cup out. Sure you got time? Are you trying to get rid of me or something? No, of course I'm not, love, honest. It's just that you generally dash off first thing in the mornings. Well, you have been doing this last few months anyway. You've been working that hard. Well, we should be able to take it a bit easier now. We broke the back of that hotel job, more or less. It's just a matter of tying up loose ends. I should be glad when you've finished with it all together. You're telling me. Still, it hasn't worked out too bad. I mean, not when you think what a disaster it looked to be at one time. There'll be a bit of money coming out of it as well, won't there? Of course there will. Only I've been thinking... Of ways of spending it, right? And why not? What else is it for? No, I was just thinking perhaps we could take a little holiday. Holiday? It's a bit late, isn't it, love? There's not much sunshine left now. There is abroad. You're getting a bit ambitious, aren't you? Oh, why not? It'd be great. Should be some really good bargains going this time of year, you know, somewhere in the sun. And what about Tracy? Would she be all right abroad? Of course she would. She's healthy enough. Fit as a fiddle, aren't you, Chuck? Well, we'll have to think about it. I wouldn't mind a bit of a change myself, you know, new places, new faces, perhaps. I'll tell you what, it'd be nice to lash out for a change. I've really been keeping that spending money down, you know, this last few months. I know you have, love. You've been a little belter. Oh, you've noticed, have you? They don't call me Orkai for now. Mm. Call me Specky Four Eyes. Some kids did in the park the other day, anyway. Oh, listen, love, I'm doing a big load of washing this morning, so I'm just not going to have a chance to get you any dinner. Do you think you could get some for yourself? Sure. Um, what about that place next to the cabin? Have you tried it yet? Yeah, once. Ah, that Len won't be giving him any custom. Len hates his guts. Don't bother me, though, but then I don't own the cabin, do I? No. See ya. See ya, love. 8p. Thanks very much, Len. Good morning, morning, Mrs. Walker. Oh, dear, what am I saying? I'm so sorry, Mrs. Roberts. I'm so used to thinking of you as a miss. Not to worry. I was Rena Bradshaw a sight longer than I've been Mrs. Roberts. Exactly. Even after I was married, my mother refused to think of me as a walker. A Beaumont you were born, she said, and a Beaumont you were remain. Well, and, of course, she was quite right. I'm still a Beaumont at heart. <laughs> this won't get my shopping down. A uh, pound of tomatoes, please. Please, please. Morning, ladies. Oh. Morning. Strong smell of broken glass in here, don't you think so, Mrs. Walker? I can't smell anything. I must be mistaken. Still, uh, it's cold enough for a walking stick, isn't it? <laughs> Taking a notice on Mrs. Walker, stalking daft as usual. Now, anything else you wanted? Yes. Did you happen to get that smoked salmon I asked for? Oh, yes. I've had it a couple Good. of days, as a matter of fact. It's a three ounce pack. Very dear, I'm afraid. I said to the fella in the van that I wouldn't be wanting a regular supply. Not for folk round here. No, I shouldn't imagine so, dear. It's caviar to the general. <laughs> Pardon? It's a quotation from Shakespeare, dear, meaning that the masses have no taste for quality. What's it all in aid of, Mrs Walker? I mean, is it your birthday or is the Queen coming for tea or something? No, no occasion. I shall be lunching alone. It's simply that I do have an appreciation of the best in everything. Oh. Yeah, well, I shall be pigging it as usual. A pie and a pint in your boozer. What do I owe you? We make it. 12.996 kilos. There's a slight Hello? variation in the third place of decimals. Come in! 
Hi. Hello. Mike Baldwin sent you round, make sure I'm really ill. You've got a persecution complex, you have. I just popped round out of the goodness of my heart to see how you were doing, that's all. I'm sorry, Steve. I'm still feeling a bit gripey. I didn't mean to be nasty. Bad tummy, is it? That's what Susie said. Well, you looked after me when I had a bad stomach after the pram race, so I thought I'd return the favour. Oh, you're nice. Mrs Sharples gave me this when I was bad. I keep it at work. Where is it? I don't know, but it's good stuff. Looks like mud with a layer of white paint. Oh, you have to give it a good shaking. Failing that, you have to jump up and down 20 times after you've swallowed it. Your spoons are in here, aren't they? I don't think I want any, Steve. Of course you do. Here we go. Oh, hang on. Oh, I can't get it out. Here we go. That's it. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Two spoonfuls you're supposed to have. Come on. Oh, it tastes horrible. Well, it wouldn't be doing you any good if it didn't taste horrible, was it? What were you watching? Maths for six forms. I'm not surprised. I've seen your adding up at the boutique. My figures are always accurate. Well, nearly always. Of course they are. I think I'm a terrific manageress at that boutique. I bet Susie's making heavy weather of it without me. I bet it's chaos down there. Well, it didn't seem to be when I called in. In fact, she reckons she can do her job and yours. And it'd save Mike Baldwin a fortune every week. I'm going to work. Come on, I'm only winding you up. Give a girl a relapse talking like that. I'm sorry. Keep the extractor going all the time, Mrs. Bolton. I think it needs it. Busy, eh? That's the way I like it. We're always busy. I've been rushed off my feet with Emily away. I'm here to give you a lift, aren't I? Cool. Wonders never cease. You weren't here yesterday, nor the day before. I've got a bakery and two more shops to see to, love. I'll try and be here at your busy times, and when I'm not, you'll have to do your best. Is he eating or just having a rest? I've not asked him. Well, then do. Customers are no good to me unless they're eating. Uh, could I have a rock? Yes. I've not asked you yet, darling. <laughs> yes, can I take your order? Uh, I'd like some at hot. What have you got? You know what we've got, the same as we had yesterday and the day before. You were in both times. Oh, you noticed. Well, you stayed so long, I was going to ask if you wanted a photo. I only stare when there's something worth looking at. Come on, what do you want? Um, <clears throat> bacon, egg, cup of tea. Bacon, egg and a cup of tea, please. And a couple of rounds of toast. And a couple of rounds of toast. I uh, have to keep my strength up, you know. I can't think what for. Morning, Albert. How are you today, lovey? I'm poorly. That's how I am today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, lovey. Will you tell her I want her? Who's her? The cat's mother? The landlady. Annie Walker. It's her I want to see. Oh. Something's the matter, Mr. Chatter. Yes, there is. I was up all night with my stomach. Oh, fair dues, Mr. T. It's better than being up all night without it. <laughs> you keep your nose out of this, will you? Play hell with me, you know. We're up and down every ten minutes. What has all this to do with me, Mr. Sato? Because it was your beer. What caused it? That's what it's got to do with you. Two pints I had in here last night, and when I was supping it, I could tell it was funny. Absolute nonsense. No beer is served over this counter unless it is in perfect condition. There's only you that's grumbled about it, Albert. Yes, well, folks don't like complaining. You love complaining. It's your favourite hobby. I don't remember you making any complaint last night. Well, that one I didn't, but when I was supping it, I could tell it was funny. Give over. Look, if you'd have thought this beer was off, you'd have made such a song and dance about it that a virgin Blackpool. Of course you would. Right, well, do I get my money back or don't I? You most certainly do not. Oh, right, well, I'm supping no more ale in here, then. There's nothing wrong with the ale, Mr. T. I had six pints myself last night. There you are, you see. Whatever caused your stomach upset, it was not my beer. Look, you've got no right to interfere. You know not about ale any road. Yeah, I can have a glass of rum to soothe my stomach, but won't run to it on my pension. Oh, for God's sake, Betty, give him a rum, will you, love? Okay, love. And I'll have a large scotch, right please. Well, I didn't ask you to buy me a rum, you know. I'm not cadging. Of course you're cadging. Oh, well, if you think that, you can keep it. Look, Mr. Tatlock, do you want a rum or don't you? 
Well, seeing as how she's drawn it. Uh, right, and uh, give Eddie one, will you, love? Oh, okay, you're a gentleman for point, love, uh, You want your heads in till you do something this ale. I told you there's a bad barrel on. Mr. Tatlock, I must ask you to stop making slanderous comments about my beer. I'll tell you what, Mrs. Walker, if you have got a dodgy barrel on, and I'm not saying you have, mind you, if you're worried about it, I'll take what's left at half price. How's that? I am not worried. Thank you all the same. What would you do with a barrel of dodgy beer, anyway? Oh, I'd find a market for it. You've got to seize your chances, nipping smarties, if you want to be a success in business. Yeah, well, I know that. And if you know it, how come you're always on the floor? Ah, well, I'm too kind-hearted, you see. As well as having the brain, you've got to have this cruel, ruthless streak. I never had that. Oh, and you haven't got a brain either. <laughs> Could I have a small shandy, please? In a second, lover. Thank you very much. Morning, Mr. Tatlock. It's not, you know. I expect you're enjoying having young Peter living with you these days, aren't you? Well, I would if he were here. But Ken's taking him off on holiday. Oh. Never offered to take me. Well, I reckon that's a crying shame, Albert. I mean, if Ken ever taken you, the rest of us round here have enjoyed it. Well. <laughs> Could I have a pie, please? Yes, lovely. Thank you. Have you uh, have you tried the food at that new place, you know, next door to the cabin? No, I would do, only with it being them that got the cabin, Cathy Close don't think Rita would like it. No. And I don't want to be disloyal. <laughs> Thanks Thanks so Thank you. That's uh, 64 pence. Thank you. While we're quiet, I'll give Mrs Bolton a lift in the kitchen. Give me a shout if you get busy again. Yeah, you can depend on it. Are you finished? Yes, thanks. Very tasty it was too. Oh, I am pleased. I'll pass your compliments on to the chef. Why don't you sit down for a bit? For a bit of what? <laughs> a bit of a chat. You know that thing that TV's supposed to have killed off, conversation? I've got work to do. Well, it's now urgent as far as I can see. Any road, you could have a break, aren't you? The union will be after you if you don't. Come on, then, if you're going to chat us up, get on with it. You don't mess about, do you? What's your line of patter? What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? I'm more interested in knowing what you do when you're not in here. Mm, the usual things and a few more besides. You've got a smash in some time. <laughs> yeah, I like it and all. She's a good job since it's built in. On you, it looks terrific. Is that it, then? I'm not very impressed. You haven't answered my question yet. What question was that? I get asked so many in here. What are you doing when you're not in here? I'm sure I did answer you in a general mind-your-own-business sort of way. All right, I'll be more specific then. What are you doing when you're not in here tonight? Why? Because I want to take you out. You're married, aren't you? So? She doesn't keep me in chains. <laughs> How much do I owe you? Uh, bacon, egg, toast and a cup of tea, wasn't it? Two cups of tea. Uh, 72p to you. Right. Are you coming out with me tonight or not? You don't mean it. Of course I do. What do you think I'm asking you for? Your idea of a bit of fun, is it? No. By yet, you aren't half hard work. Listen, you know the Canal Bridge? I'll meet you there at half past seven. The Canal Bridge, eh? Sounds like a wild evening. It's just an handy place to meet. Well? Oh, you married men are all the same. It's all fantasy with you. You be there at half past seven and see whether it's fantasy or not. I'll be there, definitely. Cheese on toast, egg on toast and a half supper. They're not for you, are they, love? You personally? She's in a dream. They're all the same. Everything all right, sir? Just the job. Thanks very much, love. ta -da. Hello, love. Put in Oh, you're joking. I've never had a chance. Honestly, I've not stopped for a minute. I've been doing a big load of washing. Um, have you any of them tins of steak and kidney, you know, for a pie filling? Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, I haven't had a chance to get to butchers today, so I thought I'd make him a pie for his tea. Hey, washing and baking. It must be love. Well, you see, Ray's one of these fellas who likes his grub, and if you put a pie crust on it, he likes it even better. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Do you know, I could cook an old pair of socks in a pie dish, and if there were a crust on and plenty of gravy, he'd thoroughly enjoy it. Mm. Oh, um, can I have a bag of potatoes as well, please, love, for his chips? Oh, you spoiled that fella. Well, he's worth it. Hi, Elsie, you're trying to just dry it. I'm very well. Oh, good. Oh, it's been a lousy day. You feeling any brighter? I'm still a bit queasy, but a lot better than this morning. Oh, I'm glad to know somebody feels better anyway. How have you been? Oh, all right, you know, not a stretch of case, but like yourself, a bit queasy. 
It must have been something about a wee at, I reckon. It must have been. Welcome. Oh. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah, uh, hang on a minute, will you? It's that girl from Ron's taxi driving firm. He wants to know if you want to go out for a drink tonight. Well, ask her to tell him not to come round tonight. Hello? Uh, Elsie's not feeling very well. Will you tell Ron to make it another night? Yeah. OK, then. Bye. You must be under the weather refusing a drink. I mean, you don't get that many offers, do you? Bless if you cheek, and where's that cup of tea you promised me? Coming up. Hiya! How are you feeling? Still a bit weak. Elsie's not much better. Oh, well, I feel great. Is your cup of tea going? Help yourself. Hey. I bet you must be tired, though, being at that boutique on your own all day. No, it was dead easy. Oh, quiet day, was it? No, it was busy, especially this afternoon. Those tops that came in last week, they're going like hot cakes. I bet you were panicking. Was I eckers like? As a matter of fact, Steve came round and said how great I were doing. As a matter of fact, Steve came round here, especially to lay his cool hands on my fevered brow. I thought it was a bad stomach you'd got, not a bad head. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, I'll breeze through the day. The paperwork's straight for once. You know, I could run that place on my own. Well, you're not going to get the chance. Oh, all right, all right. That's enough. The pair of you. I see who that is, will you, Susie? Mm -hmm. I wonder. You wonder what? It's who I think it is. Oh, no, no. Sure. <laughs> I'm clever, are you? Hello there. Oh, 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 didn't you get the message? Well, that's why I'm here. Maureen on the switchboard said you weren't feeling so good. Oh, I'm, I'm all right, really. It's just that I didn't feel up to having a drink tonight, that's all. Oh, that's all right. I just came around to see if there's anything I could do. Oh, just it's just a bit of dodgy to me, that's all. Nothing serious. But it's nice of you to bother. Gail, will you see if you can squeeze another cup of tea out of that? No, 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 there's no need. I just came to see how you were, that's all. Well, get sat sitting then. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you think you'll be back? Hey. So what time do you be home? Well, it's, uh, it's hard to say, really. Uh, depends on this bloke, you know. What's he called, did you say? Foster. Jack Foster. Uh, he, he came round the hotel site. I'm sure I mentioned him to you. Yeah, she probably did love it. Just probably went in one ear and out the other like everything else. He's not a bad bloke. And he reckons he could put a few jobs our way. You know, he's a good contact, so I thought I'd have a few drinks with him. Well, I think it's a good idea. I mean, you've always left all the contact making to Len in the past. It's a good idea to have a few of your own. Well, that's what I thought. Oh, come here. Your tie's all skew with, honestly. You don't want this bloke thinking your wife neglects you. I'll leave it, love. It's all right. Hey! You're wearing that new aftershave I bought you at last. Hey, come here. Just a minute. There's air on your jacket. Right. OK, well, I'll see you later, then. OK, enjoy yourself. Well, that's not why I'm going. It's business. Yes, well, there's no reason why you can't enjoy yourself as well. Just don't drink too much. I won't. Hey, you be a good girl for your mum. See you later. Dear Arlo. Well, come on, darling. There we go. Bath time, love it. It'll have to be me that gives it you tonight. You can't have your dad. He's gone out making pennies for us. Yes. Come on, then. Tell us what team you support. Spurs, mate. Best team in the smoke. Oh, give over. They're not even English now. Full of Argentinian cowboys. Their real name is Tottenham Hotspur. Very historic name, is that? Get away. Hotspur's the name of a comic. You might as well call it Tottenham Beano or Tottenham Dandy. <laughs> Watch it, mate. Remember who pays your wages. Listen, there's only one team in the FA, and that is the mighty Everson. Giants and Mersey sign. Yeah, not a patch on Liverpool, are they? Rubbish, rubbish! Well, they never win anything, do they? They will this season. Hey, they call them Toffees, don't they? Now, that is a silly name. No, now, it's what's not. what's Toffee got to do with football? <laughs> Everything, mate. It's what Tottenham Hotspur can't play for. <laughs> Hello. Hello, uh, Could I have a large tomato juice, please? And uh, yeah. uh, vodka and tonic? No, straight tonic for me, please, though. Don't tell me you're going to eat No, just having a bit of off colour. So oh. is Gail, as a matter of fact. She's had the day off work. Did I say you'd had trouble, stomach trouble, you yeah. and young Gail? That's right. Mrs Walker! Mrs Walker! You've got him going now. Well, what have I done? Oh. 
Mr. Tatlock, would you mind not shouting at me? Well, Elsie Tanner's been ill, and so has young girl with stomach trouble. You, you did have something to drink here last night, didn't you? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I did. Well, there you are. That's the cause of it all. What did I tell you? Mrs. Tanner, were you and Gail by any chance drinking pints or even half pints of my best bitter? <laughs> Never touched the still. Precisely. So much for your slanders about my beer. Let that be an end of it. Mrs. Walker, I tell you what we did have in here last night, me and Gail. Both. A couple of meat pies. We didn't have any tea and we were hungry. That's why we had a couple. Hey, that's it. Them pies. I bloomin' had one of them. That's the cause of the old trouble. That's what's done us in. Really? Oh, he, he could be right, you know, Mrs. Walker. Absolutely ridiculous. I think we ought to sit down. Yeah. That's got Annie Walker going, I might tell you. How are you feeling now? Oh, much better. You seem to have the knack of cheering me up. It's not only me, Elsie Tanner and Young Gale, you know. Stan Ogden's bad, and he always has a pie in here. Mr. Tatlock. You'll need to keep a plumbing pump behind that bar if you're not very careful. Mr. Tatlock, this is my final warning. One more accusation from you about my perfectly good pies, I shall ask you to leave. Right, well, I'll send them all then. Good. Only that won't stop folk knowing who to blame for starting this food poisoning epidemic. have a boiled egg. Positive. Well, toast isn't very much to go to work off, love. Not the hours you're putting in at the moment, anyway. Yeah, well, I've got to, haven't I? We're going to get electric bills like this. Oh, I'm sorry, love. But I've got to wash every day with Tracy. Could be worse, I suppose. Well, go on. You're going to tell me about last night. There's not much to tell, really. What exactly does he do, this fellow you went to see? I told you, he's in the trade. He's a builder's merchant. Supplies a lot of the big lads. He's got his ear to the ground when it comes to contracts. Could be a very useful lad to know. And he weren't asked? Hmm? Last night? Ah, uh, a little place near Macclesfield. He's got an house down there. A big place on the Presbury Road. Mm. Wasn't much when he got it, but being in the trade like, you know. You know, we could do something like that. You're joking. I'm not. Get an old place, do it up. There's lots of fellas in your trade do it. Before you get carried away, aren't you forgetting something? What? Like how push we are to stop in this place at the moment, never mind a mansion in Presbury. There's no harm in thinking. Anyway, I thought you was happy in this place. Oh, I am. Lovely house, smashing kit. Husband who treats me like dirt, but who I wouldn't swap for Omar Sharif. See you later, then. Have a good day. Always do. Oh, Elizabeth, that does suit you. Yes, yeah, good enough for every day, isn't it? Yes, indeed, he says. Mind you, I'm never very struck on the sales myself. I never seem to have what I really like. Oh, well, you've got to dig around a bit. Right at the bottom, that was. I like it to be something of an occasion when mm. I go to buy something new. I like to be sure the staff have time to serve me. Do you know what mm. I mean? I suppose I'm old-fashioned, really. Well, it's nice to save a bob or two if you can. Mm. Mind you, dear, yeah. there isn't the same degree of personal service in the shops that there used to be. It depends where you go, Mrs Walker. I mean, I've never had any complaints. No, I suppose it's a case of what you've never had, you never miss. <laughs> Highly likely. Seeing as I only believe in paying for what I get. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, what are you doing? Don't get your knickers in a twist. I haven't been here all night. Have a Mrs W. You certainly haven't, and the name is Walker. It's uh, water for the windows. Oh. Mrs Walker's the first to complain if it's not clean enough, and quite right too. Anyway, uh, tell Mrs W. Sorry, Mrs Walker. <laughs> Hang on a minute. You only did these windows a couple of days ago, and your mate came round for the money. Quite right. And a very good job we made of them, too. Then why are you doing them again today, may I ask? Oh, these aren't for you, love. Oh, no, these are for Osman Street. You see, you can't get any water down there, because they're always out at work. Anyway, see ya. ta -da. Yeah, ta -da. <laughs> Them Joe Dawson's pies? Yes, of course. Mm, look nearly good enough to eat. It's up there. Oh, Elizabeth, not you as well. I mean, three mild cases of tummy upset hardly amounts to an outbreak of food poisoning, does it? Ah, oh, no, but, I mean, it doesn't alter the fact 
They all had pies from here and folks are talking. I mean, once the muck starts to fly, you know, it's got a very nasty habit to stick in. Hiya. I thought you were on your last legs. Well, it leaves you feeling very weak. Oh, stop it. I'll be crying in a minute. It does, though, didn't it? Elsie knocks the stuffing out of you, doesn't definitely, it? Definitely, definitely, yes. <laughs> Letter for you behind the door. What are you doing home at this time, anyway? Shut for dinner. Mike Baldwin said we had it too. Yeah, but he's changed his mind. He reckons all the stuff that's nicked is more than we sell. There's one of us in the shop, so here I am. Damn it, beggar. What have you made for me dinner? Well, you'll have to go round to the rovers. I've gotten out in. Get a couple of pies. After what happened to you two? No way. I want to stay healthy. I've got this overwhelming desire for baked beans on toast. Homemade beans on toast. Uh. What is Miami mode when it's at home? Not a lot to do with you. Annual staff dance, buffet supper, cabaret. Sounds a right good dude, does that? It is. It's where you used to work in, Tails. Yeah, Doc Greenhouse sends these tickets every year. An old friend of mine. She does it every year. Nice to keep in touch with your old mates. Well, I don't. I hardly ever see her. Why not? It does sound a good do. Yeah, if you've got somebody to go with. You have. All you've got to do is say the word and you'll be round here like a shop. If you are referring to Ron Mather, I hardly think Miami Mood's staff dance will be exactly his cup of tea. You don't know till you ask him. That's true enough. Anything else, love? Oh, do you know, there was something, but it's gone. I expect I'll remember it when I get back to the shop. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. Thank See you. you. Ta-da. Ta oh, hello, Mr. Tapler. What do you call that? Oh, unless my eyes are playing me tricks, it's a small, unwrapped, unsliced loaf. Bought from this shop this morning. Correct. I remember it very clearly. I remember you sticking your thumb into four others before you settled on that one. But you said it were fresh. Right. Well, that happened were a week since. I nearly shot my thumb off trying to cut it. It's as hard as a brick. Well, it's supposed to be on the outside. It's a crusty loaf. Yes, well, that might wash with some of your customers, but it won't wash with me. That is old bread. What exactly do you want, Mr Tatlock? Nothing except what I'm entitled to. Which is? Another loaf and my money back. I haven't got another. The nearest I've got is a small slice. Well, that'll do. It's extra. I was not expecting some up and out. How much? 2p extra. There we are. Oh, if it's bread you're after, ask for sliced. Well, thanks for the tip, Albert. Never know when it might come in handy. Um, as a matter of interest, though, why? Well, the other kind's only fit for pigs. Now, listen, Mr Tatler. I had to bring it back, didn't I? Is that right? Not your day, is it, love? Why, what's up? Have you got a complaint? Well, I'm not pointing any fingers, but three of my girls have gone down with this tummy bug thing. And it looks like something they could have bought here. Now, hang on a minute. If you've got any proof, you'd better bring it in. If not, it's a very serious accusation. Yes, it is that. You just keep out of it. No, I'm on your side. I know it didn't come from here. Well, what do you know about it? Well, I were on the shelf, weren't I? And I know what caused it. Them pies from Rovers. Thank you very much, love. Nice trays, Janice. Yeah, they're very nice, aren't they? Which pub did you nick them from? Wipe them out, eh? I've emptied them. I can see you've emptied them, but they need wiping out. There's nothing worse for putting customers off their vanilla slices and staring into a mucky ashtray. I bet they don't wipe their ashtrays out when they're at home. I doubt they're even empty them. Hi. You've been in before today? No. You must be hungry then. Not especially. I see. You just dropped in for a sit down, have you? Well, you need all the rest you can get getting to your age. What happened to you last night? Last night? That must have drawn you a map. What of? Like how to get to Canal Bridge. You didn't. You didn't turn up, did you? Of course I did. Where the hell were you? Well, I didn't reckon you'd go. I thought you were What do you think I asked you for? Well, ask us all sorts in here. None of them ever meant it. Which is just as well. I couldn't stand the peace. Well, I did mean it. Look, we, we can't talk in here. How are you fixed tomorrow night? You are serious, aren't you? Of course I am. Well? All right. Oh, I can't. I'm off with me mate. Well, put her off. I can't let her down. I'm free tonight, though. Tonight? I, I don't know about tonight. Oh, well, if you can't... Look, then... I'll think of something. Same place, half seven. The Canal Bridge. I'll be there this time, I promise. Yeah, well, you better be. I don't want to hang about like last night. <laughs> One or two thought I was going to choke myself in. They're no good to you sat there, are they? I'll give you this. You're a trier. Look, they didn't go very well at dinner time. 
I mean, look at them. There's hardly a crumb out of place. Yeah, all right, well, granted they were a bit slow today, but don't mean to say they won't go later on. Folks like a change, you know. What, all at once, all at the same time? Oh, do me a favour, Mrs T. Turpin's the name. Look, now's your chance to get yourself in Mrs Walker's good books huh? by negotiating a figure mutually advantageous to both sides. If you reckon you're doing that much of a favour, I think you should take full credit. How do you mean? Tell her yourself. Mrs Walker, there's a chap here said he wants to do you a favour. Really? Yes. Oh, it's you, Mr Hughes. What do you want? Uh, it's, uh, it's them pies, Mrs Walker. What about them? Well, I thought I'd take them off your hands. That's a fair price, of course. And why should you want to do that? Well, uh, there are rather a lot, uh, considering the time of day, like. Mr Yates, will you leave me to run my business and you stick to cleaning windows very badly? Yes, yes Mr Holden. Uh, large scotch, please. And what do you want? Large? Oh, no, I'll have a scotch too, please, Mike. I've got a bit of a cold coming up. You know, you two have got a better number than me. You must have drinking large scotches. We <laughs> have, Eddie, and I'm very glad to say we have. We have been on the go since 8 o'clock this morning, may I tell you? Oh, my heart bleeds for you. Listen, it's them girls that you're exploiting I feel sorry for. Yeah, well, we nearly didn't have any girls this morning. What's that? Three of my girls are down with this tummy bug thing. I wonder why I didn't see many of them in today. Well, you were lucky to see any, Mrs Walker. Pardon? Well, you know what folk are saying, don't you? What about? It's your pies that could have caused them. Where did you hear that? Corner shop as it hasn't, but it's all over the place. That's right. This is it indeed. <laughs> Hello, love. I'm hoping you'll be back soon. Can you go upstairs and have a look at our, mm, our Tracy while I get your tea? Oh, love, I'm worn out. Oh, I'm not surprised. The hours you've been pouring in. Yeah, I'll not be sorry to see the back of this job, I can tell you. Mm, me neither. Perhaps we might see a bit more of you then. Yeah. Anyway, you can have a night off tonight. Hmm? I've arranged for a babysitter to come round. Thought we'd go to pictures in town. You know what change would do both of us good. What pictures? Oh, I don't know any. Don't matter. Oh, I'm sorry, love, I can't. Not tonight. I'm working. You were working last night. I went to see that fella last night. You just said you were worn out. Well, I'm sorry, love, I, I can't. I've got to get back. Honestly, Ray, you can't go on like this, you know. It's not worth it. Got to have a break sometime. Look, what's wrong with tomorrow night? Because tomorrow night, you'll probably think up another excuse. No, I won't. Not tomorrow. Promise? Promise. You might as well clear off when you've done that, Janice. Oh, thanks, Mr Dawson. I said when you've done, that top shelf hasn't been touched, to my knowledge. Sorry, we should. It's Mrs. Walker from the Rovers. Let her in, Janice. Well, I'm not serving her. The union would black me if I did. Is that meant to be a joke? No. Thank you, dear. Oh, Mr. Dawson, I'm glad I've caught you. What can I do for you, Mrs. Walker? Well, I think it's more a matter of what I can do for you. For me? I don't know if you're aware of it, but there have been some slight cases of suspected food poisoning around here in the last couple of days. I had heard, yes. Mm. And I'm afraid that some of the people affected had been eating your pies. I dare say they have, amongst other things. You're not concerned? Uh, why should I be concerned? Well, I'm considerably concerned, Mr Dawson. Well, are people actually saying there's something wrong with them? I'm afraid they are, yes, and not without a certain justification. I'm not saying there's actual proof. Mrs. Walker, I've not had a single complaint about my pies in all the years I've been in this trade. And that's longer than I care to remember, I can tell you. But if I thought for one minute my pies were suspect, I'd do something about it straight away. But really, half a dozen people, out of the hundreds yes, I sell half to... half a dozen too many. Yes, granted. But assuming these people had nothing else to eat, which is highly unlikely, the problem is far more likely to have arisen after they left the bakery. You mean in transit? Or wherever it is they're kept before they're sold. Are you suggesting it's my fault? That I don't keep them in the hygienic conditions? Mm, it's a possibility. Well, then perhaps you would kindly explain to me, Mr Dawson, how it is that nothing like this has ever happened until I started getting my pies from you. I wouldn't know. I know this, Mr Dawson. Oh, yes. You can cancel my order as from now. I am going back to a supplier I can rely on. Sorry, I 
I'm late. I was beginning to think you weren't going to show up again. Look, I didn't think you were serious last night, honest. Believe me now. Yeah? Right then, come on. Where are we going? I don't know. We can't stand here all night, can we? You're come looking for her, I'll be a no. Hey? I've just had a woman in from Mafeking Street trying to track down her old fella. Why, did you? Well, no. She goes round pubs and all, you know. Every night it's same. She comes home from work, makes his tea, then has to go out and drag him home to eat it. Oh, uh, I give him his tea all right, all over his flipping head. Oh, the funny thing is, I can't think why she puts up with it. I've seen her out with him a couple of times and she makes two of him. It's the way of the world, love. <laughs> what can I do for you? Uh, could I have a can of lager, please, Rena? Just one. Yeah, unless you want to come round and join me for a chinwag. Yeah, I wish I could. Only house out at a union meeting, I'm on my tard. Are you, as well? <laughs> as per usual <laughs> these days. Was it hard to get away? No, not really. I've been doing a lot of overtime lately, so what's one more night? What about last night? I was seeing a bloke, wasn't I? Business. Sorry. Nah, it's what we're under the bridge, innit? What do you think, when I didn't show? I was disappointed. And the rest. I was seething. Blow to your male ego, was it? I was looking forward to it. You do this sort of thing a lot, do you? Well, all the time. Can I ask you a question? Fire away. Why me? Well, you're a bird, aren't you? Seriously. It's a daft question. No, it's not. Only if you give a daft answer. Well, I don't know. I, I just fancied you. What do you want me to say? I don't know, really. Are you always like this? Like what? Serious. Not very often. Look, I asked you out, and you came. So let's start like that, OK? Right. And stop rabbiting on and enjoy it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look, barring a coachload of starving St. Bernard's descending on you, them pies are definitely destined to be a fixture there. You know that, don't you? I'm beginning to agree with you, Ralph. But you're overlooking one thing. What's that? I don't make the decisions here, with me. Have you flipped your lid or something? You're on about the pies at tea time and all. That's because I'm serious. I want them. Yeah, well, you must have a lot of enemies. That's all I can say. Listen, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you're around the bend. Mrs. Walker! Uh, I'm still prepared to make you an offer you can't refuse on them pies. I mean, uh, you're not going to sell them at this time of night, are you? Just getting rather late. Right then, I'll find him a good home for you. Eh? I'll get a bag. You know, you're a bit of a novelty in here. Oh, I'm quite sure they've seen a taxi driver before. Oh, aye, they've seen a taxi driver before, but not one that drinks tomato juice on his night out. I am not teetotal, honestly. It's just that I've got to keep off the booze a bit. Look. If you lose your licence, it's merely an inconvenience. With me, it's my living. If I lose my licence, it'll be a miracle. I don't drive. <laughs> have another one. I'm not bothered if you're Look, not. Don't let me spoil your night. Now, have another one. You're not. Have another one, all right? Look, I tell you so. I do a very good line in coffee if you're interested. I'm interested. Like, let's go. Hey, up. Chuck it out time, is it? Don't be so cheeky. Was it a good film? Yeah, it was all right. It would have been better if you'd been with someone, but no good on your own. You were with someone. I was with you. Same difference. Oh, come on. See you later. See you. Good seeing you. I fancy an early night as well. Well, what's to stop you? We can't just barge in on them, can we? Oh, come on. It's not like that with them. Look, she's a woman and he's a man, isn't he? You know, sometimes, Gail, your pa's observation astound me. Well, then, I'll have a Coke if you're buying. I'm not. It's your turn. I'll have the same. <laughs> them pies is lethal. You know that, don't you? That's where you're wrong, my friend. Well, how do you count for all this tummy trouble, then? Oh, it's not them. Definitely. I've had a couple of pies every day this week and not a twinge. Well, why don't you say someone to Mrs Walker, then? It's bad for business, Mr T. I can flog them for twice as much as I'm paying for to a couple of calves I know. Well, you're a crafty one, aren't you? Do you know, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me, that. Look after me, Ale. I'll be back. About those pies, Mrs As far Walker. as I'm concerned, the subject is closed. I go back to my usual supplier as from tomorrow. Suit yourself, but I've come to take that lot off your hands. 
take them off my hands. I'm not had a dissatisfied customer yet, and I don't intend to start now. Please. Yes. I'll see you get a refund for your full order. I can't say fairer than that. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. Good night. Where's he going with my pies? He really? can't do that, Mrs. Walker. Mr. Yates, he made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Sorry. Flipping marvellous, isn't it? And you can stop laughing for a start. Ancestral home. Yep. One room in the use of a kitchen. If I didn't share that with me, mate, I couldn't afford that. A girl, mate? Yeah. Unfortunately. Is he as good looking as you are? No. Who is? Must be getting late. I don't know. Must be after 11. Is it? That's what you missed last night. I'll have to make up for it then, won't I? Who says I'm going to take you out again? I do. Are you always this sure of yourself? Nearly always. I don't understand them kids. Oh, Gail and Susie. I don't remember having it as easy as they have it. Yeah, I don't remember moaning half my life away either. Oh, well, it's just that way. They don't mean it. Yeah, I know, but they seem to find fault with everything. Picking at this, picking at that. You know, and they don't know they're born. The freedom they've got and the money. I reckon in about 20 years they'll be using exactly those same words. <laughs> You're right. Oh, where is it? Where did I put it? My handbag. Oh, handbag. There we are. Oh, tell them. Oh. Find it in a minute, a woman's amber. <laughs> oh, that looks very grand. What is it? Miami Modes. Oh, don't you believe it. I used to work there. They send them tickets every year. Are you going to go? Well, not on my own, I'm not. What night is it? Friday. Y you wouldn't be interested, would you, by any chance? I'm just thinking about it. Looks like it might be one hell of a night. But Friday. Oh, bad night for you, is it? No, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll think of something. Well, look, don't put anything off for me because I wouldn't have no, been going there. No, no, case. no, no. Just... You, you leave it with me and I'll see what I can fix up, all right? All right. They've been in bed. What time is it? It's about half eleven now. Oh, uh, well, I would have been, but I started watching this film. Good, was it? I don't know. I dropped off halfway through it. You're late, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, I stopped in for a drink in town. <sighs> How'd it go? What? The job. Oh, uh, well, OK, you know, I'm glad to be back. Like, What sort of a night did you have? Oh, nothing to write home about. I would trace this set like a log and I've got all my ironing done. Anyway, I'll let you drink a summer. I'll get it. You stay. No, love, you sit down. You stop where you are. All right, you've twisted my arm. I'm fagged out. Oh, I'm blowed if I know what to fill him with. Do you know, I read a story this morning about these two crooks who nobbled a racehorse by giving him apples and water. You know, it swells them up. Well, who wants to swell him up? He's swelled up enough already, that's the trouble. I just want to fill him. A couple of tins of spaghetti. Ooh, he makes such a mess with that stuff. Yes, Mrs Walker? It's all right, I'll wait until Mrs Ogden's finished. Oh, thanks very much. 
Oh, wait, I don't mind, though, because I'm only looking. You carry on. No, thank you. I'd rather wait. Oh. Oh, go on, then. I'll have a couple of tins of that spaghetti. Oh, it's a problem knowing what to give them these days, isn't it? It must be. Like stuffing it in a dustbin. Yes, I'm sure. Well, in fairness to you, Mrs. Roberts, I didn't want to say what I have to say in front of Mrs. Ogden. Though, in fairness to myself, I would much prefer that the whole unsavoury business came out into the open. Now, I believe you told Mr. Baldwin that my pies were the cause of the recent outbreak of stomach trouble. Oh, well, you believe wrong, Mrs. Walker. Well, then, isn't the way... Yes, Mrs. Ogden? Oh, uh, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but, uh, well, are you sure you give me the right change? It looks all right to me. <sighs> oh, hey, <laughs> that's a 5p, isn't it? I were taking it for a two. <laughs> no use, I'll have to get glasses. <laughs> we wouldn't want to miss anything, would we, Mrs Ogden? No, we wouldn't, would we? <laughs> Thank you. Well, now. As a result of what Mr. Baldwin was told in this shop, he warned his girls not to eat my pies. Apparently there'd been one or two cases of stomach trouble, and he was very anxious that the outbreak shouldn't go any further. Well, all I can say is whatever he heard, he didn't hear it from me. Well, now, let's put it this way, shall we? If you happen to come across whoever it was that spread the story around, would you tell him or her that I'm no longer getting my pies from Mr. Dawson? Which is in no way an admission that my pies were to blame. It is simply a recognition of the fact that we in the catering trade cannot be too careful. And in an area like this where gossip spreads so easily, we're extremely vulnerable. Aren't we, Mrs. Roberts? Don't tell me your tummy's off as well. I'm not very hungry this morning. Are you right? Of course I am. Well, you don't sound it. But I'm all right. Will you be told? Well, I'm right. No need to jump down my throat. I'm only worrying about you. Hey, you know what it is, don't you? It's all this gallivanting you've been doing. You've been out two nights on the trot and you can't take it. Face it, you're an old married man. Hey, you're not out late tonight, are you? Well, not as far as I know. Well, don't be. Give yourself a night at home for a change. You might think you can stay out till all hours, boozing and working, but you can't. Hey, there's me to consider and all. I'm stuck here on my own with nobody to talk to but Robert Redford. Hey, he's on tonight too. 10.30. Forget what I said, love. Tell your mates you can come out. I mean, it's not that I don't love you, but we all need a change sometimes. Hey! Come on, I was only kidding. I wouldn't swap you for a thousand Robert Redfords. Well, hundred anyway. Thank you. Come again. Good job I came in when I did. She'd have walked off without paying. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Dawson. I can't be everywhere at once. I can't get old Mar Bolton out the kitchen with the orders, so I've got to go in, haven't I? And if I've got to go in, well, I might as well tell the customers to get stuff. All right, less of your cheek. Well, it's just I've been busy, haven't I? I've not stopped serving breakfast since we opened the place. Breakfast? Yeah. It's ten o'clock. You try telling those lorry drivers that. They eat when they stop, don't care what time it is. They don't like waiting either. Go on, then. I'll give you a lift for half an hour. Good morning. Welcome to the establishment. Don't tell me they've got you working. Hang on, though. Emily Bishop's on holiday. If I wasn't here, love, I'd be back at the bakery showing them how it's done there, so you can stop coming in. How can you ever forgive me? Did a good job, didn't they? First time in? Yeah, I thought it was time I'd give you the once-over. I can't even remember what it were here before. Forget what was here before, love. Never look back. Now to look back, aren't you? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Blimey. Ten o'clock in the morning. Have a look in a minute, love. He wants two more eggs, wants to know where we keep the pullets. Come, Mickey. Yeah. Two fried eggs, please. And what is it you want, love? Uh, just a milky coffee cup. Yeah. On oh, a milky coffee. Don't shout across, Janice. Go to them. Make them feel wanted. Huh? 
about making me feel wanted. I've been too much up and down already today. You've been doing too much summers, and that's a fact. You've got bags under your eyes at your age. Who is it? Tell me, lad, Langton still. Ah, uh, it doesn't have to be now, does it? I could have been to the disco with one of my mates. Anyway, what I do outside my working hours is none of your business, Mr. Dawson. It is if you turn up looking like something the cat's dragged in. Thank you. You really smooth talker, you are. Oh, now, listen to me, girl. You've got your life in front of you. There's no need to live it all in the next six months. Just take it easy. You sound like me dad. Well, I'm not your dad. So I've noticed. So I told him, if you don't feel up to it, Chuck, I says, you stop at all. Nobody thinks any the more of you for it. Oh, you can work yourself to a shadow in this world, I says, and the rest of them will just sit back and let you. And do you know someone who does that? Does what? Work themselves to a shadow? Well, of course they do. I mean, there's the old working class for a start. Really? From all I've heard, I can only conclude there are vast numbers of them, but personally, I've never been able to find any. Have a bit. What? What's she on about? Oh, got one of her oity toity moods, Anna. No, I was just talking about my stand and them as work hard. Not the same breath. Oh, go on, clever. He can graft as hard as the next fella when he likes. After you? No, after you. But, but he, he never, never likes. likes. Now, Luke. It might interest you to know that my Stan were in agony this morning with his stomach. Who wouldn't be? In agony he was. I wanted him to stop in bed, but would he? Would he echoes like? You what? I saw you pushing him out of the house this morning. I heard the purr of you. Him saying he wanted to see a doctor and you saying he could see who he liked as long as he cleaned the windows. By gum, you don't miss much you, do you? Oh, thank goodness she's gone. The way I feel, I just can't be doing with her. Are you a bit off colour, Mrs Walker? I'm in the fashion, I've got a bit of tummy upset. I keep soldiering on, don't I, Beck? You do that. I tell them all. A real old soldier is Mrs Walker. There's not many like her. Girl. I think I'll get a cup of coffee. It might dull the pain, mightn't it? It's a drug, but what can you do? My God, if looking after yourself counts, she'll live till she's 150. Which is more than you will if you keep making comments like that. Real old soldier, honestly. She's going to cotton on one of these days, isn't she? Hmm? Oh, will you wake up? What did you say? Do you know, this is what comes of having been out two nights on the trot with his mates. Oh, right, where did you get to? You don't come in here. Why would I? Well, there's me. Do you mind? He's husband and father. I mean, his mates. They have not had the pleasure, have they? What they like? Oh, don't ask me. He keeps them to himself. I mean, it's typical fellas, isn't it? They're not happy unless they're sitting in a corner with a pint of beer in their hand telling dirty jokes. You want to give it up, lovey. There's better things in life. Yes. Hi, hi. What are you having? Now, that's the nicest thing I've heard today. Usual bet. You're in here early. It's him. Couldn't wait to get the air of the dog. He's been out with his mates. What's wrong with us girls? It's a fair question. Answer the lady. Don't you ever think about anything else but lads? Yeah, men. She spends more time in front of that mirror than we do. Well, she has to. She hasn't got our natural beauty. You'll get a natural black eye in a minute. You will. It's her age, you know. Mm. Can't get about like she used to. I have heard that she goes everywhere by taxi these days. Get away. Oh, hello. This is Mrs. Tanner, number 11 Coronation Street. Could I have a cab to take me into town, please? Thank you. And if the taxi driver turns out to be Ron Mather, what a coincidence. Mm. She doesn't ask for him special, though, does she? She doesn't have to. He's got a magic taxi. Her name comes over the radio and it heads for this house. Yes. Mm. Then you better get out of the way then, aren't you? The pair of you. Have you asked him to take you to the Marmy Modes, do yet? No. She's fibbing, you know. You can always tell. She can't look straight at you. Mm. I said no. Or else she looks you straight between the eyes like nobody ever does. And will you answer that door like nobody ever does? <laughs> And tell him I won't be long. He asked me to come in a minute. Oh, hello. Expecting Ron, were you? W well, yes, yes, I was. In Woodacumbry landed for another job. Three bookies to Wolverhampton, the lucky devil. Oh, you are yes, you dear. Can't pass up a job like that, can he? He can't. You don't get all that many. Not only a bit fair and tip, they might give him a couple of winners. Is he a gambling man, then? I've seen him have odd flutter. Not an addict, though, like some of them. Oh, it's terrible when they get like that. Oh, now, where did I put my flaming handbag? Is that it over there? Oh. <laughs> I wish people wouldn't tidy up. He's, uh, 
He's separated from his wife, isn't he? So he says, yeah. I don't know much about him, actually. He's a quiet man, you know. He keeps himself to himself. Yeah. Nice fella. Oh, I'm not denying. Yeah, good looking and all. I bet he's got quite a few girlfriends on the quiet. I don't think so. Whenever... Hey, you're not, uh... Oh, heavens, no. Tony, I don't want to say the wrong thing. No, whenever I've seen him, he's always been with the same woman. Very smart, she is. Very smart. Uh, yeah. and, um... <laughs> no, it without one word. James Stewart thought he'd shot this fella and all time it was John Wayne. Who shot him, I mean? Oh, come on, it's on tip of my tongue. Did we see it? Oh, he's been like this all morning. Are you sure your tummy's all right? Well, why didn't you say you daft devil? You can leave that alone for a start. Bet, would you give me up with a small brandy, please? Hey, don't get him better. If you found someone to keep him quiet, be thankful. Tell him pass it on to Len. <laughs> I never know when Mrs. Fairclough's being serious. That's her husband's trouble. Oh, dear. Could I have a word, Mrs. Walker? Certainly, Mr. Dawson. What can I do for you? Well, there's the outstanding account for the pies, up until the point you cancel them. And I thought you'd like to know that I've consulted the public analyst, and he's passed my products 100%. And on top of that, my cook's husband has been suffering exactly the same symptoms, and he's never had one of my pies in his life. So we can all be sure this epidemic has nothing to do with me which is more than I can say for whoever you're buying your pies from now. Thank you for your valued custom. It could be then new pies. I fail to see how, considering I've only just started selling them. Well, then with collie wobbles, perhaps they bought them somewhere else, and now you're selling them. Hey, you're too young to die, aren't you, Albert? Oh, I am, dear. But I'm going to get the bottom of this, which last thing I'll do. Then kindly eat those with my compliments, Mr. Tatlock. And with a little luck, it might be. I tell you, they're not married. And I tell you, they are. Just because he's henpecked doesn't mean they're married and those two aren't. They're living together. Together, they're ancient. The permissive society wasn't invented yesterday, you know. It's been going on a long time. I mean, look at her. You're asking for a clout round the ear all in a minute. Hey, do you know what I fancy with my tea? A big bottle of cider. Oh, yeah. Well, don't look at me. Go and get one yourself. Oh, and I tell you what, get some crisps as well. I've got some ham in the fridge. We can have crisp and ham butties. Lovely. Mm. Anything else you want? Yeah, a new pair of feet. Get gone. Am I in the way? Oh, not at all. Help yourself to a cup of tea. Thanks. Well, uh, how are the races? Hello. Checking up on me now, are you? Certainly. I'd like to know what my friends get up to. Actually, I quite enjoyed it. I took some bookies. They gave me two winners in a second. Short odds. I made a few, Bob. Who told you? Well, I rang for this taxi, didn't I? And this girl arrived, didn't she? Oh, Marjorie. Is that it? She didn't say. A nice girl, but uh, she talks a lot. Yeah. Doesn't say much, though, does she? What woman does? I can't fathom her myself. Oh, that's probably because you've not had enough experience. Could be. Yeah, well, with you being separated and that. Uh, you did say you were separated, didn't you? Is that what I said? Yeah. Then that's the way it is. But don't you believe me? Why should I not believe you? Now, tell me about the races. Well, there was a lot of horses there. Oh, no! <laughs> and ten makes a pound. Thank you so much. Do call again. Yeah. You two think you're clever, don't you? Us? No. No, but you've got it wrong. We know we're clever. Oh, well, it's the same thing. Look, this stomach bug that's going about. Have you ever thought about doing a bit of detective work, like her on? Starsky and Hutch? No, no, them young women. Oh, Charlie's Angels. Yeah, that's right. You know, you favour them a bit. <coughs> Albert, is there anything we can do for you? Yeah, well, I, I was just coming to that. You see, I thought 
that if we made a list out of everybody what had been ill, put a list of all that they'd eaten, and they'd all that same thing, well, that'd be it, wouldn't it? You're not wrong, Albert. Well, look, I've got a pencil and pad here. Now, I were in here at dinner time and she was doing the roichy toichy bit. So I'm going to get level with her if it's the last thing I do. Albert, we'll show the world. We'll start with you. Well, dinner, lunch and meat at corner shop. I'm afraid I'll have to leave you to it, Bet. My stomach's in a turmoil. Oh, dear. I was going to ask you how you were, but you weren't here. No, I've been sitting down, but it didn't help. Good Lord. Is that Mr. Tatlock in again after what happened this lunchtime? Do you know, it's quite impossible to insult some people. Do you know, I was thinking exactly the same thing myself. You don't want another? Yes, I do. No, you don't. How is it you always know what I want better than I do? Does he not know that yet? He's a slow learner. Aye, heck he is. Still, he's talking again. He made a miraculous recovery, has he? Don't they all? <laughs> <laughs> yes, love? Uh, two lagers, please. Do you want another? No, no, I'm not bothered. Come on. Hey, hang on a minute. I've not finished yet. Thanks. Right. Would you believe he's doing as he's told? I should think so and all. <laughs> See ya. Ta-ra. So, that is all you've given him to eat in the last couple of days? Well, it's all I can remember, yeah. Mm. Ten pound of potatoes, are you sure that's right? Oh, you don't know him. And he began to feel funny this morning? Yeah. Now, I thought he were coming it at first, but... Well, thinking back, he seems to have had the same symptoms as everybody else. Mm. And that's all you've given him? Yeah. Hey, no wonder I'm skint. Well, that was only 11 to 10 on, but it represents a profit of £7.55 on the day. It's better than a kick in the head. Mm. I noticed you didn't bring me a present. What do you want? Oh, there was a daft sit down. Suppose you spent it all on other women. What other women? What other women, he says. Don't tell me you haven't got other women hidden away somewhere quietly. Huh? Forbidden subject, eh? No, no, no. Help yourself. It shows you're interested. Oh, don't flatter yourself. Hey, we can go to that Miami modes do. I fixed it up. Oh, whatever did I do to deserve it? It wasn't easy. They could have wanted me driving that night, but I said, put me down as a non-starter. If you haven't changed your mind. Well, it, uh, it means putting off all these other fellas. Still, I, I'll go with you. <laughs> I haven't had a good night out in donkey's right, years. Right, it's a date. Uh, oh, took you long enough, didn't it? We've been doing some research, haven't we? Like you've never seen. Into the possible cause of the epidemic that's destroying our happy northern town. Oh, I see. And did you come up with the answer? Definitely. Food poisoning. Well, we know that, you daft apers. Give us a chance. We've only just started our investigations. It could be baked beans. Only Annie Walker never eats baked beans because she thinks they're vulgar. Mm. Or it could be boiled ham, but Johnny Solomon's the bookie swears he's never had any, but he could be frightened of the rabbi. <laughs> could be caviar. Only nobody around here eats caviar. Hang on, I've had caviar. Oh, is that what you buy her? Hey, don't look at me. Must be one of her other fellas. <laughs> Us cabbies are a hard-working lot. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> We can always love you oh, now. Right. Sorry. Right. Come on in if you're coming. Are you by yourself? I wouldn't ask in if I wasn't, would I? So, what do you want? See you. What do you think? I somehow thought you weren't speaking to me. I couldn't let on the pub now, could I? Oh, you couldn't even speak. Oh, well. Fancy a cup of tea and a vanilla slice. They'll only go off if they're not eaten tonight. Great. I'll switch the lights off. We don't want anybody knocking. Well, go on. Who was it? Bet the butler did it. Have you noticed something funny? Yeah. Snap. By George, they've got it. Ah, well, we've been very clever, you see. We didn't just ask folk what they'd eaten, we'd ask where they got it from. And there's only one place on both lists where everybody's bought something from. Well, go on, who's guilty? Dawson's Cafe. No, not Dawson's Cafe. They're innocent. Are you taking me out tonight, then? No. Oh, thanks very much. 
I'm supposed to be off colour. I've just nipped out to get someone from the yard. I oh, see. So you've come in to tell me you can't come. I've come to see you, honey. I can't stop. I can't change my mind now. I've told her. You know, it's funny that. You know, before when you said her, I couldn't visualise her. I mean, there wasn't a face there. Now there is. I suppose that was her in the pub, was it? Mm-hmm. She looks nice. Yeah. You know, I somehow think your heart's not in this. I wouldn't put money on that. What if she finds out? I'll take the chance. I was hoping you'd see that. I've been trying to close for the last half hour. Bayek, you're grumbling about custom. It's all money in your tail. Well, that makes me feel better. You usually have to tick again. Oh, no. Now it's cash on the nail. There's my order. Although, perhaps I'd better take it elsewhere if you're going to be chucking your insults about. <sighs> I'm sorry, Hilda. Forget I said it. It's been a long, hard day. Just like my horoscope said, the early evening would bring an unpleasant surprise. Now, there you are. You're doing it again. Oh, you're no surprise, Hilda. How do you want your arm? Well, not like tissue paper, but I don't need too thick, neither. <laughs> oh, girls, whatever do you want? I'm trying to close. We don't want anything. It's just, uh... Well, what are you looking at me for? Oh, it's not about that food poisoning, is it? Yeah, well... Well, don't mind her. If you've something to say, say it. And if you think it's something I sell that's causing the trouble, well, I'll take it off shelves. Oh, well, that's fair enough. I mean, it could be that, Anne. No, it's not. Look, it's... I'm sick of folks shoving their noses in. If you know something, say so. Otherwise, get out and stay out. All right, you want to know, so we'll tell you. We don't know what it is, we just know it comes from here. You are? Well, we've traced it to here. All the folk that were taken ill are customers. And they're regular customers. They bought loads and loads of stuff, so... Well, are you ready? Could be potatoes, steak and kidney puddings, meat pies, eggs, lettuce, tomatoes, margarine, spaghetti, boiled ham, brawn, bacon... Fair takes the biscuit does that. Now, what do you say, Mrs Walker? I mean, for sheer brass face neck. Not to mention lack of consideration for the health and welfare of her friends and neighbours. What are you going on about, Mrs Elton? The headlines in this newspaper have already sent me lurching towards one headache without you bursting in like the witch of Wookie. She's open. Who's open? Her at corner shop, Reenie Roberts. She's not. Ah, huh? I thought that would set your suspenders twanging. Really? Do you know, I thought she would keep a very low profile until there'd been some sort of official investigation. Well, it's the least you could expect, after she's gone and poisoned nearly half the neighbourhood. Just a case of hygiene, you know, or the lack of it. You reckon? Mm. Have you ever seen her giving that shop a clean-out? I mean, a really thorough one, from floor to ceiling. Like I do here, you mean? Well, that's a very loose sort of example, mm. yes. Now, now you come to mention it, I can't say I have. There you are, then. Is it any wonder that the place is teeming with germs? Thanks, love. Keep you well, then, are you? I can't wumble. That's the ticket. Can I have a tomato juice? It might just bring me round. And then again, if I can't taste it, it could just mean I'm dead. And the shock will kill me. Third shelf down. Eh? Oh, thanks. And thanks for the concern about my delicate state of health. Do you know, that's the third time I've done that this morning and I've only been out in a quarter of an hour. Hmm? Just ask how customers are. Just like if they weren't well, I'd be responsible. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, kid. You're not responsible for me feeling like a bucket of slutch. A fellow with red hair and a bottle of scotch in his glove compartment's responsible for that. I know it's daft me thinking it's summer type soul that's causing everybody's upset stomachs. It is daft me thinking that, isn't it? Of course it is. Where's the proof? Well, no proof exactly, but definite suspicion. I mean, Susie and Gail are quite right. Everybody who's been ill shops here. The world and his flaming wife shops in here. Not to mention Arnold Newbold, who buys at least half a dozen tins of prunes every week and doesn't look a day over 40. He's only 35. Is he? Oh, that accounts for it, then. No, come on. How many have been ill? A dozen at the most? Yeah, that's true. Well, there you are, then. Gail and Susie don't know what they're talking about. What do you say, Albert? I, I, I've heard the latest. What's the latest? Well, the Tanner's down with again, according to young Gail. 
Oh, uh, I won't be wanting any bread today. Just to be on the safe side. It's no good asking for trouble, is it? When's he coming? When's who coming? That chap from Town Hall. You know, sanitary chap. He's not coming, Mr Tatlock. There's no reason for him to come. Oh, really? There's no need to shout at me. I'm not responsible. In fact, I was one of your victims, you know. Golly! Oh, take the notice, love. You know Albert. He'd cause trouble between a couple of lovebirds. Still, I hope Elsie's not all that ill. You haven't got the dreaded nudges. Well, according you? to you two, I can't have. Why not? Because she's not had nothing from the shop. If you poor you have definitely asked me from the corner shop, we have traced it there by brilliant detective work, haven't we, Gail? Yeah. Well, at least I thought we had. We have. All the evidence points to Reenie Roberts. It's an open and shut case. Well, Gail, will you do me a favour? Will you ring up Steve or Mike Boulder and tell him I won't be in today? I think I'll go back to bed. It's not that I'm that poorly, but I might as well take the opportunity of a morning in bed and have a morning off like all the others do. Ah, oh, but it'll be better for tonight, won't you? You don't want to disappoint Ron. Ron is the last thing on my mind at the moment. You are insensitive sometimes. Can't you see the poor woman's ill? I'm only trying to sort her priorities out, that's all. Morning, Albert. Didn't know you were a customer in here. I'm not. Only you don't like corner shop these days. None of you have any sense, you know. That's right. Coffee? Please. My pleasure. She seems to be settling down very well, doesn't she? Yes, yes, she does, Albert. A lot of them don't, you know. Hmm? I don't never settle. Well, well, she's not warm enough for them here, is it? She was born here, Albert. Was she? Oh, she'll be all right on that score, then. And she'll be all right with food and all. Yes, Albert. But there'll be some at, born here or not. One coffee. Ta, ah, you've met Mr. Tatlock, have you? Not before today, as a customer. Janice, Mr. Tatlock. Mr. Tatlock, Janice. How do you? Hello. He uh, fought in the First World War, you know. Did he now? Yes, he practically won it on his own. You know, I can believe that. Something about him? The bulldog breed. Got no, it. Look. There's no wrong with bulldog breed, look. And I'll tell you this. The world were a lot safer place when we were running most of it. You asked your granddad. Have I upset him? Not hard to do. Well? What? See you tonight. Again? Why not? You're pushing it a bit, aren't you? Have you a minute, Janice? Well, am I on? I was going out with my mate. Janice! All right. Same time, same place. I've served two customers while you've been chatting over there. One customer, Mr Dawson. Now, don't exaggerate. Getting very friendly, aren't you? Hmm? You and uh, Sonny Boy. There's no law against it, is there? No, but it's dangerous ground. Don't worry, Mr Dawson, I know what I'm doing. Nice. Stay at it. Thank you. There you are. Ah. So what do you say? Bingo! Well, just for a laugh. Not to mention the 200 quid jackpot they've got. I know, but bingo. I mean, it's like a last resort, isn't it? Admitting defeat. <laughs> Your husband's at Boozer. Now it's on telly. You've run out of wool, so bingo. It's bingo. Mm. Are you describing your life, Rita Love? No, I am not, Lynch. She is describing mine, as a matter of fact. Well, then, get Langton to change it. That's what you married him for, to give you an interest. He does nothing on his work these days. Well, lends it the same boat. It's become an obsession with him paying this debt back. Well, come on, let's have a night out on our own. Oh, but bingo. You could do a lot worse, actually, a lot worse. They're very posh nowadays, some of these bingo halls. Very nice. In fact, in your case, love, you would definitely be putting on the style. Are you tired of living, Lynch? Ah, <laughs> uh, can we have two lagers, one pork pie and a knife, please? We can only afford the one pie. Broke, you see. And the knife is to cut the pie in two. We would have one lager and two glasses if you... I'm sorry, dear, this isn't a soup kitchen. It's a business run for profit. I hear Mrs Tanner isn't very well. No, she's not. Getting beyond a joke, isn't it? <coughs> I think the time has come for some public-spirited person to make noises in the right quarter. 
What sort of noise is Mrs. Walker? Well, I know she's a friend of yours, Mrs. Roberts, but I do think she's rapidly becoming a public menace. Here, here. Well, there's no proof it's the shop what's causing it. It's just them two puddings there thinking they're Charlie's angels. This is the puddings, you? As a matter of fact, Elsie says she's had nothing from the shop. There you have, then. There must be some common denominator. It can't just be coincidence. No, of course it can't. <laughs> well, don't forget, the finger were being pointed at your pies only last week. Quite unjustifiably, as it turned out. Well, that is just what Reenie thinks about folk accusing the shop. Ah, well, she would, wouldn't she? Hilda. She says all she's had is a cheese salad. Salad is pretty innocuous, isn't it? Wait a minute, though. Didn't I see the factory girls buying salad balm cakes in the corner shop only the other day? Yeah, well, Reenie has been doing a few. I mean, it makes a change from the usual. Hang on. Those girls have been poorly, haven't they? Exactly. Yeah, but salad? Salad can't harm nobody. Just a bit of lettuce and tomato. <laughs> that stuff I give you is doing a good job, Albert. Well, you can see it is. Coming on the street, aren't they? Fine, fine fettle. <laughs> Just in time, we're just going to close for my dinner. Actually, we're not here to shop. No, so true, we're not. Last thing we're here for. Oh? Well, what I suppose you might call a committee of inquiry. And what are you inquiring about? Oh, as if you didn't know. I don't. Of course you do. Elder, I do not like to be called a liar. Look, you know very well what people are saying about this shop. It's you what's causing all this illness. But it's not. Oh, yes, it is. Mrs Ogden, I thought I made it quite clear that I was to be the spokesperson. Yes, well, I wish you'd hurry up because I've something under it, Grill. I'll be quite brief. You are aware that there have been general allegations against this shop. Well, yes, I am, but there are a load of... And now they are specific. Specific? I'm not sure what that word means. We have pinpointed the actual cause of... the of... epidemic. Epidemic? Half a dozen fall down with collie waddles. No, if they was all rolling about on this shop floor, you'd think it were an epidemic. Oh, Mrs Ogden. Oh, sorry, Mrs Walker. <clears throat> we have positively identified the cause. Go on. What? The salad ingredients you sell, like lettuce and tomatoes. And now have you come to this conclusion, pray? Because that's what everybody what's been ill's been eating. Honestly? Apparently. Mrs Tanner, the factory girls, myself. I stand. Where do you grow this stuff, any road? On kludgy roof or what? Mm. Growing it cheap and selling it dear, that's your game, isn't it? Yeah, well, you've got more than dahlias in your potting shed. Eh? You heard. I don't grow the salad stuff myself. I have it delivered twice a week, fresh, and sometimes more. Might I ask where from? Mr Tatlock. Mr Tatlock. Yeah. Well, there's you lot one. Not for sale. I mean, they're not ready. Oh, look at him. Caught in the act and he doesn't even turn a hair. You get daft for every minute. I'm surprised you're still at large. Which is more than you should be. Oh. Mr Tatlock. What? What have you been doing to your greens and things? What do you mean, what have I been doing to my greens? It's a perfectly simple question. What have you been doing to your greens? Then things, there. I've been doing no but grow them. Apparently, Mr. Tatlock, they are the source of the pestilence that is covering the land. You are. So, I'll give you my question again. What have you been doing to your greens? You know, the things that you sell to me, that I sell to my customers, that keeps knocking them down like nine pins. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? You were bursting with ideas about my pies, absolutely full of them, that they weren't fit to feed the dogs with. And you had a very good idea about my bread and all. Like you wouldn't eat it. Oh, well, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to shove the blame on me, aren't you? Well, if there's out wrong with my stuff, it's not... Not what? No. If you don't come clean, Mr Tatlock, I am taking samples of everything that is growing here and taking it straight to analysis. And I'll take another pile. But I don't know what I've got to come clean about, do I? I'm not kidding, Mr Tatlock. <laughs> Neither am I. 
Here, hold on a minute. Ooh, looks dead guilty, doesn't he? You can always tell when somebody's guilty, you know. Their nostrils go white. Just here where they join your face. Ooh, wait. What's wrong? What is that stuff in there? Something diabolical eating back your life. It's what I've been used for spraying. Sam Turner from next allotment gave it to me. Oh, there can't be anything wrong with that. That must be perfectly harmless. As long as you don't eat it till seven days after it's been sprayed. It's just so you're not labelled. Wish you didn't bother to read? Well, it was all covered in muck. Oh, you really are a very stupid man, Mr Tatlock. And he had the nerve to call me Barmy. When was the last time you sprayed this lot? This morning. Oh, I've a good mind to make you eat everyone right now. No, don't forget, I made myself ill. Only ill, really. What a pity. Come along, ladies, unless you feel like putting the entire place to flame and sword, which is all it's fit for. Don't you dare come asking me for bread, that's all. You're a plague, that's what you are. A plague. I don't know what you've got to complain about. I'll let you have the stuff cheap enough. Anybody home? Come in here, love. Tracy's next door. How many spuds do you want? Uh, as many as is going. Oof, it's no wonder you're fat as a pig. Well, a working lad's got to get his grub. Ah, and speaking of work, you're not, are you? What? Working late again tonight. Sorry. Oh, love, what is it this time? Well, I've got to finish that job in Chapel Street. I promised Mrs Stringer faithfully I would. They're having a golden wedding party tomorrow, and, and the woman next door wants an estimate for a new bathroom suite, so I might as well kill two birds with one stone, mightn't I? Mm, I suppose so. I was hoping to win us 200 quid tonight, and all. How's that? Playing bingo. <laughs> Bingo? You're not falling for that lark, have you? Well, I mean, it's not really your scene, is it? And what is my scene, eh? Sitting on me own ear every night, watching the flaming wallpaper. And a small loaf, please. Right. Right, I'm off, Mr Dawson. Right, you are. Don't work too hard, you'll only kill yourself. And you behave yourself. <laughs> it's attractive, isn't she? And there's a lot that think so. That's uh, 20, 35, 50 cents, please. Oh, you won't have heard, will you? What's that? What it was that were making folk ill. Oh, and doesn't Mrs Walker at the Rovers still think it was my pies? Not anymore, she doesn't. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> you wouldn't laugh if you were one of his victims. You certainly wouldn't. <laughs> You've not been ill as well, have you? I've been a victim in more ways than one. <clears throat> Look who's here, Mrs Walker, a friend of yours. Mrs Walker? Ladies? Do you want me to serve him, Mrs. Walker? No, I think he'll expect me to. Do you think she'll apologise? She'll come out in a terrible rash if she does. I'm scotch. Do you like anything with it? Just a drop of water, please. Say when. Oh, when? Do you know, I think I've only got a tenner. Mr. Dawson, please. Huh? This is on me. Well, that's very kind of you, Mrs. Walker. Very kind indeed. Cheers. Cheers. Very nice. Especially after a hard day's work. You can say that again. What could be harder than running a business? Not much. So much work, so much worry, so easy to... Make mistakes? Yes, indeed. Well, we all do. Yes. Would you care for a refill, Mr Dawson? Oh, no, thank you. One's my limit on an empty stomach. Wise man. Mm. Well, it's a great pleasure to see you. Similar, Mrs. Walker. Hey, listen to this. Hmm? Alan Kelly, aged 22, at Clarence Road, appeared at Weatherfield Magistrates Court today, accused of police assault, driving over the limit, and driving whilst disqualified. I nearly got engaged to him once. Well, thank you, lucky stars, you didn't. You'd have been doing a lot of prison visiting. <laughs> yeah. Just shows you, though, you never know what you're getting. He seemed such a nice, quiet soul. Do you know, there should be a national register of eligible young men listing their good points and their bad points. She you get it through a computer like, like a bank statement? <laughs> yeah. I'll go. Hey, if that's Jerry Barnes for me, I've gone to Katmandu. Hello. Hello. Uh, Elsie's not here at the moment. Oh. Come in. Guess who's here? Who are you? Hello there. Uh, sit down. Thanks. She didn't say where she'd gone, but I'm sure she won't be long. Probably out Goston somewhere. <laughs> Probably. How are you, Ronald? Pardon the domestic bit, won't you? But you can't be glam all the time, can no, you? No, you can't. As a matter of fact, I'm fine. I probably could find something to grumble about, but uh, what's the point? Uh, that's what I always say. Now, what have you got to grumble about? Well, fellas mainly. I wish I could think of something else. She's just had a very lucky escape, as a matter of fact. 
Oh, I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. No, it isn't. You could very easily be Mrs. Alan Kelly. Very easily indeed. Who? Oh, he's a fella I used to know. He's got himself into trouble. Hmm? Are you all you seem to be, Ron? No. In what respect? Apart from the criminal record and the seven kids I never mentioned, you mean? Yeah. Well, I get these terrible noises in my head, and I've got these big, black, thick hairs growing <laughs> out of the palms of my hands. The incredible Hulk. Do you think we should tell Elsie? You never know. It might turn her on. It does. All right, silly me. Hello, Elsie. You've got a visitor. Hey. Oh, hello, love. You're early. Yeah, well, I got changed and washed, and I thought we might come around and have a drink before oh, Well, we as a matter of fact, that's just where I've been, Rovers. You do know she's an alcoholic, don't you, Ron? Oh, sure up, you. I just went for medicinal brandy, that's all. What's up? Being struck down by the mad gardener, aren't you? Oh, you know that bug that we had last week? Well, I've got it again, that's all. You look all right to me, I'll see. Uh... I am all right, but uh, not really fit enough to go dancing. Hope you don't mind. No, no, it's all right. Are you sure? No, no, I said so, didn't I? All right. Yeah. Um, we uh, could just stay in. I like that. <clears throat> What's up with you? Oh, I've just beginning to feel a bit embarrassed, that's all. Oh, I think it's very sweet, myself. Two people falling over each other to be nice and understanding. You two are going out, aren't you? No, I don't think we're... Yes, we are. Are we? Yeah. Come on. Evening. Evening. I'll tell you something. When you say a time, you stick to it, except on first dates, of course. Well, you had to be brought down to size, didn't you? I might not have asked you out again. Have you thought about that? Your loss. You're dead sure of yourself, aren't you? No, I've got to be. Right, where we're going? Well, I've found this new pub. I spotted it this morning. I don't know why you don't write a book about pubs. I mean, you know enough. I will one day. What are you looking at? Give us a kiss. what you might have missed. What you've never had. You didn't say thank you to the kind and beautiful barmaid, Albert. Now, where's your manners? You are paid to serve me. He has a nerve coming in here. He has as Albert, got a nerve. He wants locking up. And you want shut it up. Just don't come into my shop, that's all. Well, you're saying you're too bored when you want to buy vegetables. Half the price you pay for them elsewhere. Will Lecker's like. No, well, I'm not sure they were myself, any road. You've got no scientific proof it were. I've no scientific proof that you were a member of the human race. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we want a good one, that rainy, very good. <laughs> What's well, this going on? You've uh, got an unexpected customer, Mrs. Walker. Oh. What are you looking at me like that for? I've got a right to come in here, you know. I've done no wrong in here. I'm very glad you have come in, Mr. Tetlock. Huh? If you hadn't come in, I should have had to go out of my way to seek you out. What for? To warn you to take back the produce I believe you have provided for the Harvest Festival at the Mission. We don't want a new crop of martyrs, do we? Well, that were a bit below the belt, Mrs. Walker. You know, I think I could have gone to that dance. Glad we didn't. Hmm? Huh? you like dancing much? Yeah, yes. It's all right. Have another beer. I've had four already. I'll oh. be drinking out of house and home. I got them in for you. Well, in that case, but I'll get them. I think you'll have to. I don't think you can get out of this seat. What was that for? For the beer. <laughs> it's getting late. Oh, who cares? I don't. What about your wife? Won't you get into trouble? You let me worry about that, eh? Do you? You worry about her? Yep. Would you like to come in? 
better than standing out here. That's what I thought. You should put a comb through your hair before you sit down to breakfast. There's no milk. I mean, you don't exactly look appetising like that. I don't feel very appetising. Is there any milk? Oh, yeah. I don't you think I'm going on at you, but it is what civilised people do, you know. I wouldn't know. So how did you go on last night? All right. What time did you get back? It must have been late. I didn't notice. I didn't wake you up, did I? No, there's only one thing can wake me up, and that's asleep. Mm, probably about one o'clock. Well, you weren't looking at sights. Well, one o'clock, were you? Oh, no, no, we... Well, we went for a drink. I mean, you have to, don't you? I don't know. You've got jobs before without staying out all night boozing. It wasn't all night. Oh, we went to this pub, and I, I reckon he must have been pretty well known because they took no notice of closing time. Still going at midnight, I never realised. Where was this? Uh, Middleton Way. So how did you get on? How do you mean? Well, did you get the job? Oh, no, it's uh, very much in the balance, really. It could come off. Nothing definite? Well, no, it's just in the first stages. You know what that means. It's all talk. Look, love, I know there's a lot of money to be paid off, but, well, you don't have to go flogging yourself. Can't lend you his share. Well, he does. Yeah, but you're the one who's putting all the extra hours in. I mean, look at you. Them aren't just bags under your eyes. They're flipping cabin trunks. Be on tonight. You're very bright and early. Aren't I, Mr Dawson? I always am, Mr Dawson. I'm a good girl, Mr. Dawson, very. Ah, uh, and your head's full of nonsense, I've no doubt. But your dinner hour's two to three, not half past like it was yesterday. Half an hour stood on that step's no use to me. You began very well when you started here. Yeah? I'd like to see you keep it up. Is Mrs. Bishop back today? I <laughs> praise the Lord. She'll be keeping an eye on you. She's not as daft as me. She's a funny woman, really. She's all right, though. I mean, she makes me laugh sometimes. Does she? Yeah, she doesn't always realise when she's being funny, though. Or maybe she does. She knows when there's something funny going on. Don't fool yourself there. So any dalliance you might be conducting, you want to... Um, you know what I mean? Not really, Mr Dawson. I mean encouraging married men. That's what I mean. How many of them need encouraging, Mr Dawson? I'm not here to discuss your private life. I'm saying that's all. So, what time did you go last night? Oh, very early. Oh, and we stood out on purpose, didn't we, Gail? What? Well, we thought, aye, aye, well away there. Mm, well, you can just stop thinking, can't you? Mm, well, like Gail says, she doesn't often get the chance. Oh. No, how did it go? All oh, right. You're still reading Red Letter, aren't you? Reading what? Well, whatever it is you read, you're determined to make this into a romance, aren't you? Aren't you? No. Oh, well, you could be kidding yourself. Look, we watched that telly till 10 o'clock. At 10.30, his mate came in off the cabs with a Chinese nosh. Well, it could almost be romantic. I have done turn Mr McGover to look at it. Oh. Are you sure you're well enough to go to work? Oh, yes, I wouldn't be going if I wasn't. It wasn't, would I? You'd have to, no? No, oh, I'm all right, love, honestly. Well, that's another thing that Albert Tatlock's put the blight on, the course of true romance. He's got a lot to answer for. Yeah, and we'll have a lot to answer for if we don't get going and all. Is that the time? Yes. And get these daft ideas out of your head. You know, if there's anything that puts a fella off his giggling little girls, come on. I think it went all right. Even if she was bilious. So, what sort of a time did you have? Oh, very pleasant. Oh, well, come on, tell me all about it. Thanks. Oh, pleasant, but utterly uneventful. There's nothing to tell. Are you sure you've enough with one bottle? Oh, yes, thanks, that's plenty. Did you meet anybody? Oh, <laughs> I met a number of people. I don't think you'd know any of them. Oh, no, what sort of people? Oh, pleasant, but utterly uneventful people. Oh, were they very boring? No. Mm, uneventful, but interesting. Well, not all that interesting. Oh. Countryside was very nice. I don't know, Wiltshire. It's very gentle. But very uneventful, I should imagine. As countryside goes, that wouldn't be an unfair description. <laughs> I think you're being very furtive about your holiday. How much are these? 75 pence. Ridiculous. Quite furtive. I suppose I am. You know, there comes a time in life, Emily, when you have to guard against going peculiar. You do know. Yes, but then I think, why struggle? Why fight it? I don't think your holiday's done you any good, if you don't mind me saying so. What are them? They've got walnuts in. And them? Apple pasties with uh, raisins and stuff. And how much are they? 
The large ones are 75 pence, small ones 45. Has he got the sign outside saying Baker to royalty? Oh, prices are shocking these days, aren't they? Shocking. I'll take two ginger Perkins. Right. I'm in the price of a loaf. That's bad enough for a start. Six bob for a loaf, cos that's what they are, you know, six bob. Oh, I would only say to Stan, six bob. I mean, just think back to before the war, what you couldn't have done with six bob. Can I help you, Mrs Ogden? No, I've only come in to complain about the prices. <laughs> oh, and fish. Have you had any fish lately? Oh, there's neither rhyme nor reason to it. Kippers and curtains, they used to say, didn't they? Yeah, well, it's a luxury food now, is kippers, whether you've got curtains or not. And Stan's always been very fond of a kipper, you know, but he thinks they're cheap. You just can't get it through to men, can you? I say, can you? Oh, no, you can't, Hilda. Mm, I'll have a couple of them meat pies. Hey, did you enjoy yourself, Emily? Uh, very pleasant, thank you, but uneventful. Well, thank you very much. I'll be in to buy something again when I'm married to a Rothschild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. That was his apples. <laughs> yes? Oh, it's all right. I'm not in any hurry. I've really only come in for a sit-down and a chat with Emily. Oh, I wish I had time to sit down gossiping. I don't know how you do it. So you don't want anything? Uh, yeah, I'll have a cup of tea, please, Thank and you. an orange squash. Oh, and have you got any of them gooey things with vanilla in? Oh, do you like those? We've got them, yes. Well, I think they're horrible, but Ray likes them, so don't let me forget, will you? No. Uh, Your baby, is it? Yep. Say hello, Tracy. Hello. hello. Oh, sorry, it was a cup of tea you wanted, wasn't Yes, it? and an orange squash. So come on then, Emily, let's hear all about your holiday. <laughs> hey, can you see me skiing? Well, why not? You've got to try with him once, haven't you? Well, no, not if you've got any sense. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Après ski, they call it, Betty. Uh, it's when all the survivors gather and throw caution to the winds. <laughs> and I hope everything they say is true. <laughs> and I hope you fall all the way off the top of an alp. Oh. And then I hope salt falls on top of you. Thank you. Do mention it. But you're going, are you? I was thinking about it, yeah. Mm, sounds a bit pricey, though. Not cheap. Well, come on, how much? Well, two weeks in Germany, well, I don't suppose you get much change out of what? Monkey? Oh, what? 500 quid, about. How many have you got? It's just me. Well, I think it's scandalous. 500 quid? Yeah, well, don't look at me like that. Well, I do. I think it's wicked. Well, why is it? You do what you want with your own money, don't you? Well, I mean, all those people going without the necessities, and here's all that money being spent on pleasure. Oh, lend me your handkerchief. Well, I do. I think it's criminal, don't you, Bet? No, I think it's criminal. I'm not going, that's all. <laughs> but if I played my cards right, no, second thoughts, <laughs> think of the price I'd have to pay. Hey, give us a couple of points, will you, and... Uh... Oh, no, just as I'm asked you. Hey, would you spend 500 quid to go skiing on holiday each? I wish we had it to spend. Would you, though? If you like skiing, yes. Thank you. When you got the brass, why not? Well, it don't seem right to me. Well, you can't take it with you, can you? You're going off skiing, then, are you? I've just given them an idea how much it costs. I'm talking about top result, though. Well, ah, 500 quid now, is it? Oh, listen to it. Ah, they spend that in a day, some of these folk. Well, I don't know any personally. It's just a couple of drinks to them. You're talking about the millionaire classes now. I'm just talking about holidays. Well, what I say is this. It doesn't matter what you spend or what you spend it on. Well, yeah. it's your own money. Hear it. Whether it's a yacht or a pint of beer. I couldn't agree with you. Well, if you're spending 30 pence on a pint of beer and your missus is struggling to pay it rent, well, that's wrong, you know. The rich can do nothing out wrong. That's what you're saying, isn't it? The working man can't get a pint of beer, can he? That is not what she's saying. It's all in proportion, isn't it? You can do what you like, as long as nobody gets hurt by exactly. it. Exactly. So, can I go skiing, then? Can I have a pint? Hey, has your elder seen the rent man this week? We own our own house, don't we? Oh, well, that's all right, then. <laughs> oh, you're right, though. It's whether anybody loses by it, isn't it? I mean, if nobody's losing, why not? to be addressing a Mrs. Tanner by any chance. Sorry, love? She does live here. Who told you that? Is she at home, dear? She's still at work. She works over the road, doesn't she? Well, all right, if I have to go over there and look for her. But no, hang on. What's all this about? I'll save that for Mrs. Tanner. Are you her daughter? No, I just live here. Oh, then you'll know what time she'll be home. Well, she could be on for a dinner. I don't really know. I'll wait then and see... Well, you best watch inside, then, aren't you? That's very kind of you. It's straight through there. It's 
So this is where Ron's been spending his time. Oh, you know Ron, do you? You could say we've been together long enough. But it's Mrs. Tanner I want to speak to. Right. Now to get some work done. It's a very solemn moment, really, isn't it? You're not saying that in any spirit of mockery, I hope. Oh, no. There's a breathless hush descends on Incoming Street when they hear them words, you know. When he downs his last ceremonial pint. And walks slowly to his ceremonial barra. What is decorated with his time-honoured ceremonial ladder. And his time-honoured ceremonial chamois leather. Uttering them pathetic words. Can you fill me bucket? It's a very moving ceremony. It is. Have you done? They do say it only happens when... I you said, have you done? Sorry, Stan. I haven't seen you flogging yourself to death, have I? Every hour God sends. I was down that cafe, yeah. I've watched you. I've got my eyes open. Well, you do that, Stan. Can we have the same again here, please? Ah, uh, no, I'm all right, thanks. Yeah, me too. <coughs> Fill that up, look. Certainly, Stan. Hey, um, did you go anywhere with that business last night? Huh? Deirdre said you went to see about some work last night. Oh, yeah, yeah, after I'd done them other jobs like you. Know. Where was that, then? You see, you shouldn't have mentioned it. Why, we don't QT? Oh, no, I just don't think nothing will come of it, that's all. Where was it? Middleton. Middleton? Who do we know about Middleton? A bloke named Foster. Foster. Oh, look, forget it. It's no big deal. He's got a site and permission for a few houses, that's all. Anyway, I've got to... Unless you're going to have another drink. No, not for oh. me. Right, well, I'll be on my merry way. See you at the yard tonight. See you. Tra. Foreigner? I shouldn't think so. Elsie, this lady wanted to see you, so I said she could wait here. Uh, I don't think I've had the pleasure. Uh, no. Uh, let me introduce myself. The name's Samson. Dawn Samson. Oh, I thought it was... Oh, forget it. Uh, well, I'm Elsie Tanner, love. What can I do for you? Well, Mrs Tanner, can you honestly say you've never heard of me? No, I haven't. Honestly? I said. Um, I think it's about time I was getting back to work. You all right, Elsie? Yeah, I'm all right, love. It's all right. Now then, uh, should I have heard of you? Well, it depends on what circles you mix in, Mrs Tanner. Look, love, will you do me one courtesy while you're sitting in my parlour? Would you mind telling me why you're sitting in my parlour? Because if you're going to talk in riddles, you know where the door is. Then I take it you've never even heard my name before. You take it right. So, he's never even referred to me. He? He? You must know I'm talking about Ron. Oh, oh yeah, well, it does help. Please don't make fun of me, Mrs. Tanner. Look, love it, I'm not making fun of you. You come in here, you say your name's not Mother, so I take it that you're not married. No, I'm not married to him. But you've got some form of relationship. Much more than a relationship. Well, uh, some form of understanding, then. I'm still not sure whether you're making fun of me. Oh, love it, I'm not. It's it... not just an understanding. You can have an understanding with any one of a dozen men. But Ron and me, we've got something that some people never find in a lifetime, and I mean that. It was just an absolutely natural and instinctive thing with me and Ron right from the start. Yes, well, I, I don't know what to say to you. you they say there really is... It well, is it's absolutely not... there, you see, but we've built on it over the years. So I'm just asking you to think, if you destroy this, it'll be six or seven years of my life you're throwing away and Ron's. I don't want to destroy it. Well, maybe you don't intend to. I don't intend to, and I don't want... Look, love, I know it sounds daft and people do say it, but we really are just good friends. Well, there's one thing I've got to know. Have the two of you ever... I beg your pardon? Have you danced? Have we danced? Have you? Have you? Have you danced with him? Who's that? The red man. Not today. All oh, right, it's not the red man. I think you better make your mind up. Oh, come on, stop messing about. Oh, it's you. Yes. And I bet you're surprised. Stunned. Can I come in? The last time I let you in, you turned out to be dangerous. I turn out to be dangerous? <laughs> That's what this chain's for, to keep dangerous people and wild animals out. Well, this chain is on the wrong side of the door. <laughs> and you, as you, heard your van outside. Mm. 
I've made you some coffee. I've heard what your weak spot is. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I'm told you can't resist a vanilla slice. I am partial. Your wife was in with the kid. She's nice, your wife, isn't she? Very. Yeah, attractive and all. Yeah, a lot of people think so, including me. So uh, why are you messing about with me? You think that makes everything perfect if you've got an attractive wife? Doesn't it? No. Do you love your wife? Yes, and she understands me. Mm -hmm. So uh, why am I even talking to you, let alone why are you lying on my bed? Well, I can answer your second question. Come here. I'm just your bit of spare, aren't I? <laughs> I wish it was as simple as that. Isn't it? No. You're a terrific liar. Well, it's probably best all round if you go on believing that. You tell your mates. Do you have a good laugh? <laughs> Come on. I'll bet you do, about how you've got a bit of stuff, coloured and all. Do you tell them? No, I don't. And if I did, I probably would mention the colour. It's a very nice colour. I like it a lot. Well, it's better being old pink and blotchy, isn't it? It is old pink and blotchy, then. You are. Oh, Mrs. Tanner, you don't know how glad I am I came to see you. You've done so much for my state of mind. Ah, yes. Well, you don't want to let these ideas run away with you. Well, you know how it is, how a little idea can grow and grow in your imagination. Yeah. Well, you set your mind at rest. I'm not trying to take him off. He always comes round here sometimes and does little favours for me. But if we stay and have a bite and watch telly, that's as much as we do. Oh, sometimes I give him a cuddle if he's lucky, but... Uh, where you're concerned, I stand aside. I really do. Well, I think you're a very understanding and sympathetic person, Mrs. Tanner, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Oh, say no more. But you do understand the demands that are made on him. Oh, don't worry, love. I'll keep him on the straight and narrow. Well, then, I've no right to take up any more of your time. Yeah, and I'll get shot if I don't get back over the road. I'll probably get the sack myself, but I don't care. It means more to me than anything else, my relationship with Ron. You don't know how much has been poured into it or what we've been through. Yes, I could see it was out of the ordinary. And apart from that, he's a lovely man. Yeah, nicer than most. Uh, you must come and watch us sometime. Oh, yes. Yes, I will. Because though I say it, it shouldn't. As a couple, we've got class. Hello, Emily. Hello, love. It's me, Deirdre. Um, listen, love, uh, you haven't found a purse in the shop, have you? Oh, thank goodness for that. I've been worried sick here. It's had all my housekeeping money in and everything. Don't worry about it. It's all here. I thought it might have been yours. Can you imagine what his lordship would have said? don't know if my command of the English language extends that far. Precisely. Anyway, I'll be round later on to pick it up. Don't bother. I I'll drop it in to you, unless you're desperately short. Oh, no, no. If, if you could drop it in. I mean, really, will trust me if I need anything. See you this evening, then. OK, love. And thanks very much. That's a load off my mind. Bye. Sorry I'm late. I got held up. Try not to in future, Janice. Sorry. And I'm sorry, Janice, but it will have to be docked. Yeah. It's over half an hour. Right. Have you been running? Whatever do you do in your dinner hour? Does it matter? I'm only asking. I had to go down to Thompson's to pick up all that stuff, didn't I? That didn't take you two hours. Oh, all right, it didn't. I can not stop for dinner, can I? OK, fine. Fine? Yeah. Give us two, will you, oh. I don't give a damn what you do dinner time, but I would like to know who this flipping builder is out Whitefield. It is Whitefield, isn't it? Middleton. Oh, I Middleton, yeah. Foster, was it? Foster? Yeah, all right, Leonard. Just lay off, will you? Look, mate, either you're doing a foreigner and I've got every right to stick me nose in, or else you're doing one other thing. Just one thing. I recognise the pattern, you know. Yeah, or I could have been talking to a builder named Foster in Whitefield. Oh, Middleton. Yeah, so if anybody asks, that's where I was, all right? I only hope I'm flaming wrong. Otherwise, you're a fool. <laughs> Glad you're concerned. Right, cock. Check, 
taxi for Mrs. Turner. All right, you can come in, Ron. I'm decent. <laughs> how are you? I'm fine. You're early. Ah, I'm covering for Arthur. I came round to see how you were after last night. I'm fine, fine. But are you, though? Are you sure? Honest. Now, if there's anything you want... Well, if you're not doing anything, perhaps you might uh, drop in. I could do with a bit of coaching. A bit of what? Yeah, you see, it's me Latin American that's the trouble, particularly me rumba. And I understand I'm talking to an expert. OK, who told you? Um, I hear you've been missing your sessions no, recently. Now, no, look, come on. <laughs> yes, first time in six years. You know, we could do with a bit of music to this. No, now, how did you find out? Yes, well, I had a very jealous dancing partner around here this afternoon. God! <laughs> Dawn didn't come round here. She did indeed. She thinks I'm trying to parry her for the Latin American, the Northern Regional, you know. She's daft. Yes, and very jealous as well, worse than a wife. I know. Mind you, she only wants you for your body, you oh. know. But I must admit, you're um, a very nice mover. You're not bad yourself, <laughs> Mrs. Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> no, why didn't you tell me? Seems to me that you've taken every waking moment of your life studying ballroom dancing. You've won cups and everything. But why didn't you say why? People sometimes find it a bit funny. Well, if it's what interests you. You see, besides, there's a closed world in there. It's... Yeah, I can imagine. I, and you have no part in it, see, and that's great. Yeah. It, it's, it's like, you know, it's very intense. Oh, it's yes, dancing. yes, I gathered that. Well, now that I know about it, um, I'll have to keep you on your diet. Oh. And off the fags. Oh, God. And drink in moderation. No, no, no way. Eight hours sleep a day. She thinks everyone ought to have eight and hours. And see that you get to your sessions on top. You don't mind doing this? It's a bit peculiar, keeping you in the peak of health and then thrusting you into the arms of another woman. I'm just a convenient place to stick a number. That's all. You, you, you don't find it funny? No. I'll watch you on telly. <laughs> well, good night. Good night, love. Good night. Right, Mrs. Bishop. I mustn't forget Deirdre's purse. Do you think she'll do? Janice, oh, yes, I think so. No, oh, she started well enough. Well, she's been coping while I've been away, hasn't she? She's getting a bit free and easy with her timekeeping. Well... If you want to keep an eye open, let her know. I will, certainly. It's since she started knocking about with this fella. Has she got a boyfriend? Ah, married he is. I think she wants her head testing. Oh, well, yes. You'll know him. Cocky lad. Him that's in with Mr. Fairclough next door. It's not Ray Langton. That's the fella. Oh, I think that must be wrong. It's not, you know. Still, they can do what they like of it dinner time, as long as she's back here when she's supposed to be. Will you lock up, Mrs. Bishop? Right, I'm for the off. But it's not gone eight o'clock yet. Well, I promised to be on the site for this new load of piping. We don't want another duff load. Can't Len do it? Well, he can, but I said I would. See you later on, then. I might quote you on that. Well, I mean, you said that last night and the night before. I've hardly clapped eyes on you all week. It's just, hello, goodbye, and then you're off to work again. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll be home tonight. We'll have a night in, eh? Promise? Definitely. All right. I might even practice my so-called culinary skills. Hey, love, where's your jumper? You'll freeze to death like that. Um, it's in the van. See you about six. OK. Hey! Raimondo, what would she do without me? Good question. You want to go slow or something, girl? You've been stood with the ball for the last ten minutes. It's not me that's going slow. It's his iron. It's not getting hot at all. Mm. I can see Gail's point, though. He doesn't seem the type, does he? Oh. Wrong. And what type is that, exactly? <laughs> the type to go ballroom dancing, you know. No, I don't know. You know. What she means is, the sort who's silly enough to go prancing round the dance floor in a monkey suit with a number on his back. Oh, yeah, and you two would know, wouldn't you? 
I was weaned on come dancing, mate. My mother's favourite telly program. She used to go to sleep counting sequins. There's definitely something wrong with this iron. It's not getting hot at all. I don't wonder the way you two keep dropping it. Try spitting on it. Spitting on it doesn't make it hot. It only tells you when it's hot and it's not. Well, perhaps John Travolta will give it the once over for you if Elsie asks him nicely. I've asked you nicely to stop taking the mickey out of it. Well, I'm not only behind his back. Yeah, no wonder he gets embarrassed. You two poking fun at him every time he turns his back. Now, take that paper out of the butter. Well, I've heard of secret drinkers. Secret gamblers, even, but never secret ballroom dancers, have you, Gail? There's no one with ballroom dancing. English people started it, and a lot of clear people take pleasure in doing it. Oh, you see the funny side of it, Elsie. Have you seen them on the telly? Look, when you bring your fancy friends round here from the discotheque with a jewellery and high heels, I don't make comment, do I? Because they're your friends and your business. And I'll thank you to do the same with mine. And put that ironing board away when you're finished, Gail. What did I say? If you ask me, it's not Ron that's embarrassed about ballroom dancing. You're going to run out of excuses. What was it this time? I uh, had to be on site to check a delivery. Uh -huh. Oh, before I forget, you left this behind you. Yeah, I know I did. Thank you. I only wanted to see you. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Except it's not really me. You have to convince, is it? Are you going to be late for work again? Oh, so I'll be late. Why should you make all the excuses anyway? Clear the decks, love. Oh. Where's. Um... Oh, she's not in yet, I'm afraid. We'll have to have a word if it carries on, you know. It's well after nine. Crack the whip a bit. Let her know where we stand on it. Smell that, Mrs. Bishop. Go on, smell it. Straight from Thumbn is that. Nothing like it, eh? Fresh pastry. Very nice. That, Mrs. Bishop, is the result of hundreds of years perfecting a skill. It's a dying craft, you know, pie making. Uh, Mr. Dawson. Anybody asks you, tell them. All the nourishment they want from one of those pies carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, you name it. Uh, Mr. Dawson, about what you said yesterday. Oh, what did I say yesterday? Shift those sandwiches along a bit, will you, love? Well, it was more an implication, I suppose. All right. About Janice. Now, what about Janice? Well, you implied that she might be having some kind of relationship with Ray Langton. Did I? Well, that was certainly the impression you gave. Correction, love. I said it was the impression they were giving. It shocked. All I know is what it seems like, and it seems like, well, signals are being given, as it were. Signals? Yeah, <laughs> signals. Second glances, long looks, call it what you like. Oh, well, that hardly amounts to anything. Exactly. Hence, I use the word impression. Now, how are we off tomato soup? We were getting a bit low the last time I checked. Oh, all right, I think. I'd better take a look, just in case. Well, like I said, all it seems like is... Well, anyway, now you're here, you can judge for yourself, can't you? Don't say it. I'm late. Sorry, I got caught up. Mr Dawson did comment on it, Janice. Oh, yeah? It's not the first time, apparently. I said I'm sorry. What more do you want? An act of contrition? <laughs> I had to let him come. I had no choice. I wrote and told him it was useless. I said, if you want to see him a VAT account, tell the inspector to go to my account, because that's where my books are kept. Well, they listen. The account had to come over here with two years' books. And who gets charged for his time, eh? We all go through it, you know. Yeah, who did they send, eh? A kid. No. Well, I can't have a go at him, can I? <laughs> well, they do it deliberately. Send a kid to do a man's job. Well, why would they do that? Because they know that we're only going to pick on someone our own size, don't they? Oh, it's never stopped you before. I'll deal with you later. <laughs> Three hours of me time and money wasted. Wasted. Yeah. You know, you should try listening to yourself sometime, you two. It's not but moan, moan, moan. We are not moaning, Mrs Sharples. We are just exchanging a few hard facts of life. 
Well, it sounds like moaning to me, and you've got less reason to moan than anybody I know might moan, and the same goes for you, Len Fair. Go up that. You tell them, Mrs. Sharper. Of course. But everybody's punch bag, we are, you know. Mm. The bosses, yeah, the self employed. Victims of the bureaucrats. Just because we're not sufficiently organised, it's a scandal. Uh, don't they sound uh, sorry for themselves? Uh, poor uh, thing. Well, at least they can afford to do it over a pint, which mm. is more than I can say for somebody I know. Eh? Hey? If anybody's being victimised, it's Ray. Pack it a plain Chris, oh. Chris please, don't you? Well, don't nobody's victimising Ray, are they? I thought you said you only pick on people your own size. Well, I haven't been picking on Ray. Not recently, anyway. Oh, no. Three nights this week he's not been home because of work, and then he was up first thing at the crack of dawn on the site again this morning. Well, perhaps he's getting conscientious. Stranger things can happen. Not to Ray, they can. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Look, Len, I know somebody's got to do it. I'm not daft, but you once said that partners not only share the profits, they also share the work. So how about sharing some of it the Langton's way, eh? Just by way of a change. Have you any idea what the hell she's on about? Because I'm sure as hell I don't. I hate to come between a man and page three, Stan, but are you supping or what? Where's half in there, will you? It's not page three, it's Gigi's. Well, it had to be one thing at other, didn't it? Sex or gambling? You know, there was a time when we used to read the papers just to see the news. It's not the news that gets me so much as them horoscopes. Do you know what mine said last Friday? It is a weekend, time to go out and enjoy yourself. Well, I mean, I could have told them that, couldn't I? And did you enjoy yourself? Oh, no danger. Stood behind here both nights, getting sore feet, and then I toddled off home to Ed McBain. Who's he? You let this fancy man? He writes books, Stanley. Yes, Hilda. Uh, a light tail tap. He's paying. You were? You heard. Hey, um, it's here again. That taxi pulled up outside your house just this minute. Is that so? Mm. Calls quite a lot these days, doesn't it? Is that a question or a statement, Tilda? Neither. It's an observation. Well, in that case, I don't need to answer it, do I? It's not only daytimes, it's there neither. It's evenings and all. You don't say? Oh, taxi driver, though. You'd think she could do better for herself, wouldn't you? How the mighty fall, eh? Oh, I don't know, Hilda. We all have to take what we can get. And some of us get what we deserve. just come off the Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Bishop. I'll go. Hi. Hi, all right. Never better. What can I do you for? Can you uh, get off again this dinner? I'll uh, work on it. Well, do that, because I'm going to be tied up at home tonight, and it's going to be our only chance. I've told you, kid, you're the one that takes the risks. Have a round of cheese. Well, it's true what they say, then. What? You're the last of the big spenders. <laughs> sort of the half of it. I can believe that. Hey, Vance Park, down the road. You're enjoying this, aren't you? How are you? Mm -hmm. Oh, is this going begging, Mr. Bishop? Let's help yourself. Oh, Mr. Dawson, you can't take me dinner on that. If you can give me your word to get back on the dot this time. Cross me heart. Good enough? It'll have to be, won't it? Go on, then, up it. Top. I mean, take Gail. Ask her what her ambition is in life, and she'll say a fella, a family, and a centrally heated house in that order. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing if you're that way inclined. Hey, be finished with that. Oh, I don't know where you put it, I don't really. Round me waistline, mainly, but who's worrying? <laughs> No, it's after the trouble starts, when they've got all their worldly goods. That's when the boredom sets in. Boredom? Habit. Call it what you like. Well, it's rather a bleak view of marriage, though, Susie. More realistic one. Anyway, it's not really that I'm talking about. It's human nature. People get bored with things. I mean, take all the cars you see in the papers for trading in. It's not because the owners think there's anything wrong with them. It's because they're bored with them. It's as simple as that. People aren't cars, though, are they? I mean, they don't own one another. Not in that sense. Try telling fellas that you think they only have to one date. Oh, there are some happy marriages, Susie. Oh, yes. And some end up like that battered wife of Mrs Bishop. That's an exception. Exceptions have nasty habits of proving the rule. Anyway, if what you say is true, how come so many end in divorce? I'm not sure so many of them do. One in four, according to statistics. Ooh, statistics! Fact of life, love. Right, so, very nice bit of cheese, that. See you again.
You are loaded down. Yeah, I'm also on the cadge. You know that recipe book you've got, the one with the fancy French sauces? Could I borrow it? Yes, please. Yes, you can. Here, let me take Oh, this. thanks very much, shall I? Oh, now I'm fixing Ray something special tonight because he's been working that hard. So I thought I'd, you know, lay something special on. That's if I ever get myself together enough to do it. He's been working, you say? Oh, yeah, every night this week. Oh, they, say, they, they say that means something, don't they? When a fellow's work starts meaning more to him than his wife. I'll have to watch it. Anyway, better get this one fed before she starts exercising her lungs. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you later, love. Thanks very much. Ta-da. Well, I warned you, didn't I? I told you they'd laugh. That's true. Have you time for another? Oh, yes, thanks. Well, you know... Ballroom dancing. The kids are bound to find it a bit of a joke, aren't they? Yeah. Not just Gail and Susie, either. A lot of folks around here are ready to laugh it out, particularly if it's got anything concerned with yours, truly. That's because they've nothing better to do, Elsie. I mean, that was one of the reasons I took it up myself in the first place, rather than sit night after night in the boozer. And who were the first people to take the mick? <laughs> my drinking pals, my boozing buddies. Is that why you kept it quiet? Well, is it? Well... Subject never came up now, did it? Mm. Conveniently. Thanks. Well, I suppose it would have come up sooner or later. Later rather than sooner, perhaps. You're not really choked, are you? About my not telling you. After all, it's only an innocent hobby. No, I uh, could be if I thought about it. I mean, wondering what else you're holding back. Holding back? Well, I'm the proverbial open book, aren't I? I mean, you know everything about me, me home, where I work, me mates. But what do I know about you? Your name and your cab number. You could be, you could be Dr. Jekyll for all I know. Yeah, but I thought that was the nice thing about it, my dropping in, the informality. You know, it's very pleasant. How's it going? I think it's either a new fuse or, failing that, a new arm. we better have a new fuse, it's cheaper. <laughs> I think I've got one somewhere. Where are you going this afternoon? Oh, where the devil drives. I have an airport run at three after that in many bodies. How's that for size? Thanks. You know, I'm really not, not much good at it, Elsie. I'm talking about myself, I mean. Well, not about the things that matter anyway. And it matters, does it, this ballroom dancing? It did, once. You see, after my wife and I broke up, I found myself with a lot of time on my hands and need to fill it. Well, anyway, this pal of mine, he kept on and on at me about ballroom dancing. Well, I was too old for sport and I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. And I met some wonderful people and I got around quite a bit. I was good at it too, you know, I quite surprised myself. The first prize I ever won at anything was at dancing. Hey, why don't you come and watch us sometime? <laughs> you know, that's what she said, your partner. Oh, she would. <laughs> You're a bit of a show-off on the sly, aren't you? There's nothing sly about me, Elsie. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> right, I'm off to put my feet up for a bit. Anybody wants me, I'll be back to lock up about six. Sign of age, that, Mr Dawson, putting your feet up in the middle of the afternoon. Isn't that right, Mrs Bishop? Aye, well, certain of us didn't get the chance of a dinner hour, did we? So certain other members of the staff could take theirs. Naming no names. Oh, are you trying to make a point, Mr Dawson? I would be if I thought anybody would take it. Mm. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Bye. He's not a bad boss, is he, as far as bosses go? You know, there was one. He's got a garage off the Derby Road. I used to work on the pumps there. He never got off his backside, not even once. Every time a customer rolled in, he'd say, Off you go then, Janice. I can still hear him now. Off you go then, Janice. So one day I surprised him, walked straight out the door. Lazy great pudding. Look. He offered us a lift down to the shops. So where's the harm in that? You don't have to justify yourself to me, Janice. I mean, can't a bloke offer somebody a lift without all and sundry jumping to conclusions? I don't remember saying I jumped to any conclusion. Oh, you don't have to, love. It's all in the eyes. Every time I look at you, there's a look of accusation. My mum was right. I should never accept lifts from strangers. I'd have saved us all a lot of bother if I'd gone by bus. That won't stop people talking, Janice, and sooner or later they will. What about? Come on. 
About me having a lift in Real Langton's van? You know very well what about. I don't. I'm used to people talking about us. I've got no choice. Not all of them behind me back, neither. Yes, well, in this particular case, you're not the one who stands to lose anything, are you? He's over 21, you know, over the age of consent. He also has a wife and family. I'm not totally insensitive, you know, Janice. I can imagine how these things... I mean, I'm not trying to condemn anybody. What are you doing, then? Well, I'm just trying to think ahead, I suppose. Think of the possible consequences. There you are. Make yourself useful and open that. What are we celebrating? Me having my husband home for a change. Oh. I had a word with Len, by the way. Len, what about? Oh, you doing all this extra work. I saw him in Robes at dinner, so I collared him. And said what? Just that while he was down there supping pipes, you were working yourself silly. Well, what do you want to go and say that for? Well, I am your wife, Ray. I do have some say in the matter. Well, not to go belly aching behind me, but you don't. I wasn't belly aching. I simply said that I didn't think he was doing his fair share. Well, how did he take it? Well, he put on his injured, innocent look, like butter wouldn't melt. Cracked on, I, he didn't know what I was on about. He got the message, though. There's a waiting list, apparently. I mean, I know you had to get their names down for going to school, not play groups. Anyway, I said we'd go down one day next week when the kids are there. You might at least pretend to be listening. I am. I might as well be talking to myself. This is your daughter's future we're discussing. Right, and we're going to see a play group next week, I heard you. Wonders never cease. There we are. And if you've any complaints, refer them to Emily Bishop because it's her recipe. Hey, that doesn't look at all bad, even if I say it myself. Mmm, what is it? Oh, I don't know, steak, uh, ala something. <laughs> Took me all my time to cook it, let alone pronounce it. Oh, get that, will you, love? I've left the spuds draining. Yeah. Ray Langton. Ray, it's me. Look, I know you can't talk, but something's come up and I've got to see you. Now, tonight. Who is it, Ray? Oh, it's for me, love. Look, I'll try and get over later on, all right? You're not going out. Well, I have to. Oh, Ray. Well, that was the site form, and one of them pipes we laid has burst this water all over the shop. No. Well, it could be dangerous. I'll, I'll just go and check it, and I'll come straight back. Well, what am I going to do with all this lot? Well, stick it in the oven. I'm only going to be half an hour at the outside. <sighs> oh, what a tangled web we weave, eh? deceiving him. I've just not told him where I am. No, oh, well, it won't take a genius to work it out, Hilda. Now, I told him this morning. I said either he mended that broken pane of glass or he got no supper. Now, he were warm. Twice he were warm. How did it break in first place, Hilda? Well, he stuck his great fist through it, didn't he? Locked himself out while I were in laundrette and had to bust in. Don't you and Stan ever synchronise your lives? Like getting two keys cut so you can both get it down separately? Oh, well, now, that's just the point. If Stanley had his own key, that's exactly what he would do, isn't it? While I was working here, he'd slope off back home and put his feet up, wouldn't he? Right then, since this is the age of liberation, which one of you two lovely ladies is going to buy me a drink? What's liberation got to do with it? Well, us fellas have been buying drinks for generations, haven't we? Eh? You want equality? Even things out, now's your chance. Mine's a large scotch. We didn't invent it, you know. What? Buying rounds. It were men that invented that, so they pay the price. Mine is a G and D. And mine. Well, what happened to the time when women were yielding, eh? Soft and feminine, that's what I want to know. They're only to chaps like you, love it. Uh, <laughs> Mike, get in the minis, he. Mine's a gin. What are you drinking, Hilda? Well, I'll have a light, eh? Rita? <laughs> well, anyone else while you're at it? I mean, you might as well all step in. What's going on? Is it somebody's birthday? Oh, it's as good as love. Mike Baldwin's buying a round. Another oh, sherry down here, Betty, love. Why didn't I keep me big mouth shut, eh? Well, well, that's why it's so big, love. It gets such a lot of use. <laughs> well, what did she say? Just that you saw us going out together at lunchtime in the van. And well, that's why you rang me? Not exactly. 
But she knows, Ray, I'm sure she does. Ah, uh, just because she saw us going off together in van. You didn't see her. She was deliberately looking out for us. And you did see her? Yeah. Well, why didn't you say something then? Well, I just hoped she wouldn't make anything of it. Ah, uh, she won't do nothing. Not Emily, she wouldn't know where to start, would she? She just kept going on about how we should think about what we're doing, you know, about you being married. <laughs> She's just preaching. Emily's like that. Where are you supposed to be now? Well, I said a problem will come up at work. She's not a mug, you know, Ray. You can't go on like this forever. <sighs> it's all so pointless. Might as well just jack it in right now. Is that what you want? You know it isn't. Well, then, what else did Emily say to you? Nothing. Well, why are you getting cold feet all of a sudden? I'm not getting cold feet. I just thought you ought to know that's so. all. You're the one that's taking the risks, Ray. So we'll give it a rest for a bit. Just for a few days, clear the air till things settle down. Then what? And we'll take up where we left off. Don't ring me, I'll ring you. I didn't say that. But you're the one that started all this, Janice. Yeah, me and my big mouth. Do you have to go straight back? Yeah, she's waiting for me. It'll be all right. You'll see. I'll phone you, okay? See you.